evening, everyone. And welcome this evening. I'm going to first stand and take the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Our clock is right twice a year. A first order of business of the approval of the regular session meeting minutes from October 25th. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? We don't have anyone here to record the vote, so I don't see Courtney and Kelly. All right. Thank you, Rick. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And just for the record, there are no, uh, no public attendees today uh, on TV. So everyone here, there is a big crowd, <laughs> a very big crowd. I don't think I've seen a crowd like this in years. Um, so uh, this evening, we're welcoming uh, a number of police officers. Uh, Chief, why don't I let you start it off, if you could? And we're saying goodbye to a few as well. Welcome back, Chief. Thank you. It's great <laughs> to be back. Um, it really is. It's been a, it's been a long time. Um, it's wonderful to see, to see you all tonight. So we have a, f a few things on the agenda. So I'd like to first and foremost start off by uh, we have two new officers that, have, uh, that we've hired and have been gone through their training. They've been on the road. Obviously, I've been gone, so I um, wanted to be here to formally introduce them to you all tonight. Uh, as you know, we are, we've left civil service, so our hiring process is somewhat a little a little different it actually is more advantageous to the town so we're able to cast a wider net if you will so we're not restricted to a list or a test put forth by the Civil Service Commission uh, so we are able to solicit officers from all departments not just civil service departments but before we were restricted so another nice thing about that is we're able to um, attract more lateral transfer officers that these are officers that are already full-time Academy trained so that's a general that's a huge advantage to us we get somebody that's Academy trained, has some experience on the road, as opposed to somebody that we now that the town has to hire, go through the hiring, the background process, and put them through an academy, and then go through field training, and you're looking at probably a year by the time this all said and done with all their training. And then sometimes, as good as our background process is, sometimes those things just don't work out. Um, so we've been very, very fortunate with the fact that since we left civil service, that we've gotten some fantastic lateral transfer officers and that continues tonight. I'm very excited to show, uh, to present to you two officers that we hired. Um, both excellent, excellent. They're going to be great members, additions to our family and the public safety team here, and I think they're going to be an asset to the community. Uh, first one is Jacob Zablocki. Jacob went to high school, Shepherd Hill. He transferred to us from the Douglas Police Department, right next door, where he was there for about two years after he completed the uh, State Police Municipal Academy. Uh, he had dispatched there for two years prior to that, and he has a bachelor's in criminal justice from Anna Maria College. Um, he had taken, he's taken several uh, drug investigation classes, as well as some classes in officer safety, and he's hit the ground running with, uh, we have a myriad of young officers there, and he blends in very well with them, and they're hit the ground running on the midnight shift. They've had some fantastic cases and made some very good arrests for officers with the, their experience, so I'm excited to see where his future comes. That was a great asset. I was glad to see uh, him apply to us and, and to come and join our team. Uh, so he started, he was appointed in July, finished his, his field training officer, and he, so he's been working on his own for, for quite some time while I was gone down in Quantico. Um, second officer we have is Melissa Bach. She was appointed on September 11th of 22. So she, I believe, also interviewed at the same time Jacob did, and was very, we were very impressed with her, uh, her demeanor and her, her background. So when we had another opportunity for a vacancy that arose, we reached out to her and she was very excited to get the opportunity, the chance to come and join our team. So she, prior to this, she worked in Stur for the Sturbridge Police Department. She was there for about three years. Uh, prior to that, she worked for UMass, uh, University of Massachusetts in Amherst after completing the Northern Essex Community College Police Academy. 
and she has also has some dispatch experience where she dispatched for the state police and the regional dispatch center for two years. She has a bachelor's in criminal justice from Westfield State, has training in crisis intervention, which is very important. Uh, we have several officers that are trained in that, so it's great to have another person that's trained in that and to join our team. And she's also certified as a car seat installation technician, so we'll be putting her to work doing that because we get a lot of requests for that. Uh, and she's also uh, certified in ARAG, which is Advanced Roadside Impairment Driving Enforcement. So it's like a step above uh, officers receive OUI detection training in the academy. This is a step above that. So they're in, trained to detect folks that are impaled, not just on alcohol, but also drugs as well and some different tests that they can give. So it, that's a huge asset. We try to send as many people to that as possible uh, that, that work the road because we're a very proactive department. So to have somebody else that's trained in that is a huge benefit to us. So. Melissa just completed her field training. Uh, we got great remarks from her field training officers uh, last week, so she's on her own. So with that, I believe now we are actually fully staffed. Uh, hopefully everybody stays healthy and we should be in good shape. So we are uh, very excited. We're, we have a, had a lot of transition over the last five or six years, so we're a younger department, but that's great because we have a lot of people uh, that are excited, they're, they're very young and energetic. And the nice thing about the lateral transfers that we get is people that wanna work in Webster. Um, one of the th first things I asked them when I sit down with them in a preliminary interview is why do you wanna work in Webster, not just why you wanna be a police officer, because you can go be a police officer anywhere. As you've seen in the news, everybody's hiring, so there's no shortage of police jobs, but I want people that wanna work here and subscribe <coughs> to our philosophy and believe in what we do. And these two individuals absolutely do that, and I'm excited to have them on the team. So I'm, and I'm very proud to present them to you tonight, Melissa and Jacob. Thank you, Chief, and welcome, officers. I'm not sure if Officer Zablocki wanted to come here because he grew up in Dudley in a rivalry between Bartlett and <laughs> you know, I'm sure that's not true. We're the excellent places, so. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome uh, officers, and please be safe out there. Thank you for joining the team. It's a great uh, team. I'm sure you've already realized that, so thank you. Any questions from the board? We can always offer the microphone to the officers if they wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chief, you want to take the uh, the next one, and I'll take the one after that. Is this so this Which so this is the that? outstanding investigative. Yes. Yeah, so as board. you know, shortly shortly after I became uh, the chief, we had a report of an of an abduction from the May Street Park, and which is pretty much after you know being the chief for about five months uh, was everybody's pretty much any police executive's worst nightmare was an actual was an actual abduction where a 12 year old girl was taken randomly from May Street Park, transported over the line where she was assaulted and then dropped off and um, you know very had very limited information as far as identifying her attacker so um, you know we had to start we, we really didn't know where to go, but our investigative team that we had, which consisted of um, Detective Ham, uh, then Detective Reed, Detective Trainer, Detective Whiting, uh, Lieutenant Wentworth, and, and the Deputy Chief who couldn't be here tonight, he's on vacation in Florida. Um, you know, we put together a, a plan, and I have to tell you that it, they did some of the finest police work I think that's ever, that, I, that I've seen. Um, they did everything soup to nuts b between collecting surveillance footage to the point where they writing extensive in-depth search warrants to search cell phones and cell towers and social media applications. They were able to track um, where, not only where the suspect went, but through that investigation where I able to identify a car which came to a residence in Connecticut. And it was just a very complicated and complex investigation, but they, the way that they identified everything and tied it all together when we presented it to the FBI because it had transferred over state lines it was a no-brainer and it was they and they were um, blown away they pretty much you know these gentlemen 
made the case for the FBI. All they had to do was present it to the U.S. Attorney. So they did all the legwork. They did everything. The case was solved. And we had the suspect identified several days after the incident. Uh, we just couldn't do anything because there were certain steps we had to take. Uh, you know, getting the FBI involved, we were able to get, they had a surveillance team that was watching the suspect, which actually connected DNA from a used cigarette from watching him on a job site in Worcester, which, is, which was the nail that um, really sealed the case and was the final nail in the coffin because that DNA was what tied him to the victim. So we were able to get a uh, minimum, minimum mandatory sentence, which he pled out to, which I believe is 25 years he's serving, and there is no time off for good behavior. So they did a phenomenal job. They were recently recognized by the FBI office in New Haven, Connecticut for their efforts, and they received, an, 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 and rightly so, received an award from the a U.S. attorney down there, and you know, in rec that was just because of COVID, everything got pushed back uh, a couple of years. But they they just really uh, received that October 6th. So I wanted to bring that to the board's attention so that they could be recognized and lauded for their efforts that they made. This is this is legit a Netflix documentary. It's that good, and I'm not just saying that because you know I'm the chief, but to watch it all transpire was just really phenomenal. How quickly we did it and how well they all worked together and, and with other agencies. It's a once in a lifetime case and they did a phenomenal job. They hit, they hit it out of the park and I can't say enough good things about it. And uh, you know, to bring closure, not just for themselves, but the victim and the family and to be with them every step of the way, particularly Joe Reed was, was phenomenal with them. And um, you know, it was really helpful for, for the victim to find some closure in this and to get it so quickly. Uh, I just can't say enough of how proud I am. It was probably one of my finer moments to be able to give that press release, press conference over there and answer the questions and say that, you know, we, we got this guy and these guys did a phenomenal job and I can never, I can never say just how proud enough I am of them. They did a great job. Thank you, Chief. Uh, just certainly a round of applause for yeah. all the <laughs> We're a little bit late in doing this, but you know, I think um, the teamwork certainly showed up with the accolades given by the FBI and, and uh, the recognition that you, re you all received from the FBI. We have a minor uh, you know, uh, citation, a good citation, mind you, um, in recognition of all of your hard work and dedication on this. It really shows the amount of teamwork um, and you know, to get accolades from the FBI is just, uh, you know, I think out of this world. So I certainly agree with Chief that um, uh, it was above and beyond just fantastic amount of work that was done. I'll open it up to the board if you have any. No, I just think, you know, everybody did a great job. And, and what impressed me was the intermunicipal and interstate mm -hmm. working together. I mean, that, that's, that's really impressive. That's good. So I think we have some citations. I know uh, Deputy Chief, you said, is, is not here. Yep. Okay, but I, I see Lieutenant Wentworth. I see Sergeant Trainer. He's got a bit of a beard on. I almost didn't recognize him. I know Sergeant I Joe like Reed is here. He's got a little bit of, less of a beard. <laughs> uh, Detective Ham, I see you're here. You have no beard. <laughs> And there's a bit of a goatee in a, on, on uh, Detective Whiting there. So come on up and thank you very much. We'll just we'll shake your hands. You collect your goodies on the far side. Outstanding. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. Excellent job. Nice piece of work. Congratulations. Well done. Great job. We raised money for the Congratulations. Well done. Excellent job. Congratulations. Great job. Great job. Great job. And actually, I'd like to shake the chief CM too. We'll do that twice because is the, the, man, the man behind all of running the, uh, along with Deputy Chief uh, Wheeler, behind running the department. So thank you as well for your work on this. Um, I don't know if we're doing any pictures, but I think we have all of the names hopefully spelled correctly over here. Yep. Yep, want to hand these out? It might be a process for us all to do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll read uh, the deputy chief if you have it there. Thank you. 
So each of these are to the officer, the sergeant, lieutenant. Uh, this, hap this one happens to be a deputy chief, Toby Wheeler. Known all by men, these present, that the Webster Board of Selectmen hereby officially recognizes Deputy Police Chief Toby Wheeler and our lieutenant, sergeants, and officers, detectives, and extends its appreciation to them for their outstanding investigative work and diligence during the abduction of a young girl from the May Street Park in May of 2019 that led to an arrest. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen wish to join with the citizens of Webster on this 14th day of November, 2022, in recognizing Deputy Chief, our Lieutenant, Sergeants, Detectives <laughs> as well. Thank you all very much again. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Kelly and Courtney, for getting those together. I was the last person signing. I was stuck behind a pontoon boat driving up Lower Gore, and I did not pass the pontoon boat to get here. <laughs> I was afraid of your citations. <laughs> so the no shave, you see the beards and the facial hair, it's no shave November is a tradition in law enforcement. For officers will usually grow their facial hair out for various causes, depending, goes varies from department to department. So we. Uh, the officers donate $50, it goes to the Mike Lee Cindy Johnson Scholarship and they get to grow facial hair for the month of November and then they'll usually ask me to do it again and double down December so for another $50 to raise money for the scholarship because that goes to a, a senior from Bartlett High uh, in Mike and Cindy's name so it's a way to help fundraise. For I'm just not sure if Lieutenant Wentworth like me can't really grow a beard but this is, this is, this is all I get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you again. The, the next item on the agenda is something that I think the entire town, the Board of Selectmen, our town administrator, the entire police force um, should be extremely proud of. Um, it's recognizing Chief Shaw's accomplishments uh, through taking the uh, course, the FBI course, um, at the National Academy in Quantico. Um, I'm sure that uh, Deputy Chief Wheeler missed you greatly the time you were away. I know you didn't get a chance to come back and, and see your family um, during that entire time, but um, it's important to recognize this, this accomplishment. You know, it, it is the National Academy, if you all don't know what the FBI is, the premier training in the world. So this is uh, probably the envy of any police chief, any top law enforcement officer, not just in the country, but in the world to attend and to attain and to complete. So, Chief, we want to wish you uh, congratulations. And Thank it's you. a long, you know, long time away from your family. Uh, we did see some of the updates on Facebook, so we know you were actually working hard. <laughs> they are not hardly working. So, um, and congratulations again from all of us. So, any comments from the no, meeting just board outstanding. Other than yeah, congratulations. It's outstanding. Thank yeah. you. Right. I just want to say thank you, you know, to Rick and, and the town, and, and I can't say enough to my, you know, Deputy Chief Wheeler, Lieutenant Wentworth, you know, the sergeants, everybody over at the at the station for kind of, you know, picking up the slack and allowed me to be able to enjoy, really immerse myself into this experience. Uh, I applied in 2015 to go, and I didn't think I was going to go, and then I got an email in March saying, though, by the way, we'll see you in July. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> um, and then I, you know, being able to go down there and, and knowing that, they, you know, they had everything here well in hand, and I had no doubts at all about, you know, their abilities to do it. And, I, and I'm thankful, truly thankful, that they picked up the slack and, and, and ran everything here fine. And you know, I had no doubts, and I just am very thankful. It allowed me to really get the most out of that. It was an awesome experience. Like I can't say enough about it. Like I would say, even borderline life-changing. Uh, I met some phenomenal people from all, of, like, like the chairman said, all over the world. Uh, it was, it was, it was a great. Learned a lot about myself and others, and. Um, took back some some good ideas, but I also was it reinforced a lot that you know we do things right here. Uh, it made me very thankful. Not that I wasn't thankful before, but I'm very thankful to work where I work in this department and for this town because of what we do here, and we have a very special place. And it really just reinforced that with me. And um, you know I, I can't say enough about how you know how much I. If anybody that asked me like would would you go back again? I said absolutely, and I recommend it. I want to send as many people from Webster to go down there as, as we can, as, as they'll allow. Uh, it's very competitive. I, I waited seven years to go, um, so, but I'm going to try to get as many people down there as we can. So thank you again. It's well, it's certainly, a, certainly a first for Webster, I think, ever, mm -hmm. um, having a chief or anyone going to the FBI National Academy. 
Uh, so we wish you all the best. Um, he did almost uh, have to get called back. I remember getting an email for a court case that yeah. he was going to be required by the judge to come and testify. I, I think he may have uttered a few words that maybe we can't publish <laughs> yeah, here, but uh, fortunately that case was dismissed and you didn't yep. have to interrupt your service. So that was good. <laughs> thank you again. Thank you to, to your command staff and to all the officers for you know picking up all the pieces that uh, had to be taken care of during your absence. So yeah. congratulations again. We do have a citation oh. for you. I'll read it. A certificate of recognition, recognition, Chief Michael Shaw, known all men by these present that the Webster Board of Selectmen hereby officially recognizes Police Chief Michael Shaw for his accomplishments and extends its congratulations to him on graduating from the Federal Bureau of Investigation National Academy. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen wish to join with the citizens of Webster on this 14th day of November 2022 in recognizing Chief Michael Shaw. Chief, congratulations. And now to the more somber part of the uh, police department evening tonight. Um, we're here to recognize three of our uh, reserve police officers who will be retiring. Um, Captain Todd Jankowski, Sergeant uh, Chad Devino, and Officer Richard Welsick for over 20 years of service to the town. I'm trying to see who may be here sitting down. Okay, there's Todd. I can see Todd. Gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind, um, I think Chief, you have some plaques. We just want to say thank you. Um, I'm sure you've spent a lot of time. I know Captain Jankowski was at the Wintiki fire, um, you know, probably hopefully the last and worst call he, he will have ever gone to in his retirement. Um, but thank you all for all your dedication. Uh, you've had a lot of time to spend, I'm sure, whether it's parades, details, or what have you, and all that volunteer work. So thank you again from uh, the bottom of our hearts and from all the citizens of Webster. We'll miss you. And Chief? Yeah, so, so this, is Sorry. this is unfortunate because, you know, one of the things that came out of the Police Reform Act was uh, they created the, the Post Commission, and one of the things that st it changed the, the requirements for part-time police officers. They had to attend a bridge academy and do so many hours of patrol time a year, which we just weren't set up for that here in town. Uh, and the bridge academy was another academy where they had to commit so many hours to do it, and unfortunately, you know, it's hurt a lot, not just Webster, but a lot of departments. You know, we really, really, for my entire time here, we really counted on the reserve officers here to help us out quite a bit. And it's, you know, it's, it hasn't been more evident than, you know, when we have our larger events, 4th of July this year, we didn't have any reserve officers. They volunteer their time. So these men and women that make up this unit, they would come and they would donate their time to do traffic assignments, or if we had a catastrophe where they had to, we needed someone to help in direct traffic, they would come out and do that at no cost to the town because they cared about their community. And to lose them is kind of a, it's a really unfortunate byproduct of, of the legislation that was passed. And there's just no way around it. So it's unfortunate that we have, you know, the, these gentlemen um, retired and it's a huge loss to this town. It really, really is. It's. Uh, you know, it's a great opportunity for the officer, the person that wants to give back to their community in the way that these gentlemen did by volunteering their time and being a part of the community and helping out. But it's also a great experience, an opportunity for somebody that's younger and maybe trying to get into law enforcement to get some experience and to do those ride-alongs. And, you know, we, we required our reserve officers to, to volunteer so much time, and a lot of them, these, especially these three, exceeded that. Uh, because they love what they did and they loved who they did it with and they loved who they did it for. So um, to lose them is, a, you know, it, it's tragic might be a, lo a strong word, but I think it's appropriate because it's really is a, it's really is a shame and it's something that, you know, the legislature really dropped the ball on that because, um, you know, this, they were a huge asset to the town and, you know, even just we had the parade on Veterans Day. And I had to staff that now with officers paying them overtime, whereas, you know, but, you know, they had everything down to a science and they enjoyed doing it and they were, they were, and they were great at it. Um, 
so now the town has to pick up that slack. But we lose those people that were there for the right reasons. Like I talked about when we hire our lateral transfers, we want people that wanted to work in Webster. These three individuals in particular wanted to do what they wanted to do because they love this town and they love the department. So to lose them is, it's really unfortunate. Um, I can never say thank you enough to them for all the hours that they put in and all the stuff that they did behind the scenes. Uh, it's countless hours that even not in uniform, just you know, making sure that all their trainings are up to date. That you know, Captain Jankowski ran the unit like a like professional, like a like a mini department. He did a phenomenal job. Sergeant Davino has been on for you know over 20 years, and was great in mentoring the younger folks. And Rich Walchuk, I mean, you couldn't ask for somebody with a bigger heart um, and a great family. And, and they still will continue to volunteer with us. But you know, it's it's really is unfortunate to lose them. And I, I just want to say, gentlemen, thank you very much. So we do have some plaques for you um, to hand out. You know, if this is the appropriate time sure. to do that. Sure. But um, you know, have you come on up? We we will we will be a lesser community based on your retirement, and we will certainly miss all the efforts that you did. And thank you for all your volunteer work. So. Thanks for everything. Thank you for everything. Thanks for everything. Thanks for everything. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I think you've heard enough from me. So <laughs> I was going to say, Chief, is there anything else? Would you like oh. to come up here and take my chair? I'll go no, 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 I'm good. <laughs> All right. you Chief, job. thank you very much. Everyone, thank you very much for officers, uh, command staff, please stay safe out there. Yeah. Thank you for coming tonight and yes. supporting everyone. And thank you all for recognizing them for all their efforts. And we, you know, it really means a lot to have the support of the board and the community. So I, as, as the chief, I thank you very much. This, this wasn't always like this as anyone that's been around for a while. So it's really nice to have the support of the board and I appreciate it. So thank you all. Thank you, Chief. Thank you.
Maybe we'll bring a chair up here once Kelly's all set. And we'll have you both right up here. Welcome and uh, congratulations on your victories and returning to office yet. <laughs> Is it close? Very close. About 20 minutes or so. Welcome, Senator Fatman, Representative McKenna. Pleasure to see you here. I just, we, just, we just marched in the, in the Veterans Day uh, parade, at least with Representative McKenna. I'm sure you were marching somewhere else, South Ryan. Bridge. South Bridge. <laughs> we'll forgive you for that. That's okay. <laughs> um, so welcome. And we thought tonight, um, if you could give us uh, an idea or maybe legislative update, perhaps talk a little bit about uh, PFAS, water, maybe a little bit about the bridge between <laughs> Uh, Webster and Dudley, and whatever else you had uh, on your mind that you might think uh, makes sense to talk with us about this evening. So yeah. welcome. Absolutely. And before we get into the legislative update, I just want to make a comment or two about the proceedings that happened before we came in with the police. And I think it's appropriate that we're here this evening with the recognition that our fine police department received. And it, it strikes me, and I usually say this at Veterans Day, but it's appropriate here as well. Oftentimes people will come up to us and say, thank you for your service. And we do have service, but the hardest thing that we often have to deal with is someone yelling at us about a presidential issue <laughs> and a neighbor who throws grass clippings on their lawn. And that's not a real challenge in the real world. The gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen who serve are, as veterans and especially as first responders are those who truly have public service. So they're the ones who truly deserve thanks and gratitude for their service. Um, so I, I wanted to say that. and then. We heard the comments from the chief on the <coughs> unintended consequences of the post commission. And, you know, it's, it's really sombering to hear that. And it's part of the reason Senator Fatman and I were not in favor of that bill. And it's frustrating to, to see the negative impacts that um, actions that the legislature took with best intentions in mind, but the negative impacts that it's had on small communities. So, you know, we appreciate all that they continue to do. Well, well said, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to reiterate, too, to thank our veterans because we just got through Veterans Day. We were all down in Memorial Beach, and um, I met a guy at the uh, Polish-American Vets after all the ceremonies were done, who I think some of us know, um, Archie LaPlante. And uh, I spent a little bit of time with his son, and you talked about sacrifice and you know what people do to preserve what we're able to do here right now. Um, I was informed that Archie was on a boat with Winston Churchill uh, on a somewhat secret mission, um, you know, in Europe, and he was uh, up in the crow's nest. And you know, Archie's 101 years old; he'll be 102. And just want to express a great deal of thanks for all those who serve. Um, and I'll say it's under that umbrella. It's wonderful to be back. Um, participating in a meeting like this. It's been a long time. Uh, we all know it's been some obstacles you know, over the years in the way, but it's really nice to be back, so thank you for having us. Yep, certainly welcome back. COVID's put a damper in many, many things, and uh, uh, thank you as well to, uh, I think, Archie's brother, Joe, 
Yeah, Joe. Um, yep, Joe's combined, uh, I think they get 200 years because Joe's going to be 99 in, yeah. Yeah. in uh, December. So yeah. thank you to him as well. So Absolutely. I'll leave the floor open to the two of you. Yeah, well, I, I know one of the things that you mentioned right off the top, which I know everyone here in um, Webster is certainly concerned about, is the PFAS. And while I don't have a ton to report on that, we did recently, finally, pass an economic development bill in the state. Um, and fortunately, tucked into that bill was a line item um, that was approved that is for a reserve for local and statewide environmental and tourism projects. And then there's probably several hundred targeted projects within that, and one of them is $100,000 for um, design costs, related expenses associated with the construction of a water treatment plant to assist with PFAS remediation in Webster. So there, there is a targeted um, earmark within the economic development bill that was just signed last week by the governor that'll provide a very small step in the right direction um, to assisting Webster getting off the ground on um, whatever form of remediation or treatment uh, is on the horizon. Thank you. So. Thank you we were also you. in um, Shrewsbury not too long ago for, um, I think it's District 7, with the uh, firefighters. And one of the more significant things, because obviously our firefighters are affected pretty greatly by PFAS um, as one of the you know, issues that they face uh, with their public safety service. And um, there was a discussion with uh, Representative Kate Hogan, who is the highest ranking woman in the House of Representatives, and I believe third or fourth overall, um, outside of my branch, but she um, had made a commitment to helping not only with PFAS for public safety officials, but for public water systems as well, and said that that was on the legislative radar for the next session, which starts in January. Which, um, you know, to segue in, we, we have some decent news with regards to where we see the state budget going. The most recent report um, for projection was we were about $300 million over um, projected revenues currently. Um, and if you've studied anything about the last fiscal year, um, it was about $5.6 billion budget surplus. Um, so with being able to ascertain funds, Joe and I have had some of the success in doing that with trying to help the town of Webster. He mentioned the money in the economic development bill. We also had put some money in for um, Jaws of Life down at the fire department, uh, $200,000 for um, Webster Lake Association um, for you know, mitigation of some of their waterway systems. And um, those are things we look to build upon uh, in the near future. You know, the FY uh, budget coming up um, will start in the House in April, uh, but it will really start in February when the new governor will file um, her budget, and then we'll get a chance to amend and take a shot at it as well in the Senate in May. So um, if there's anything that is on your mind that, you know, I like to concentrate on infrastructure type uh, capital programs because they have long lasting effects. Um, if we can help in that regard, be happy to do so. And the second thing to keep an eye on is the second round of state ARPA funds because there's $2.8 billion sitting there um, that has to be planned to be spent by 2024 and expended by 2026. So I know Joe and I have those on our radar to try to help the various towns and people that we represent and we're all ears. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to come tonight is just here if there was anything uh, perhaps that the board had in mind for, for capital projects. Yeah. Well, I think we're seeing the, the effects of it, uh, maybe suffering the effects of it on Lake Street um, mm -hmm. with that first round of, of ARPA funds for the water and sewer. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's worked out well and I'm sure that um, Earl sitting on the Water Sewer Commission uh, can identify a street or two that yeah. uh, some of those funds can be worked on as well as Rick trying to figure out where to spend. Are there going to be similar uh, apportionments, do you think, similar fashion of apportioning those funds by, by cities and states? I think so. I, I imagine. Yeah, yeah I, I think it, it passes prologue on this. I, I think it, the system worked last time to probably pursue it exactly the same way. Um, and, uh, you know, I think just a, a few other issues that um, might be worthwhile for the community more than anything. Um, Joe and I had filed a bill in honor of the Dabrowski family and their daughter Amanda. Um, you know, unfortunately, it hasn't gotten to where it needs to go to become law, but we feel fairly confident that next legislative session uh, that we will be able to come here with that family and report it is law. 
Um, you know, there's a loophole in the um, domestic violence protections in our state that basically say, you know, if you're a temporary employee, you're not eligible for those. And uh, it's a loophole we've, we, we like to close. We actually went to the resident expert here to help us um, with uh, Selectman Bork and see how we could fashion it in a way that, you know, his business community could support as well. So um, we feel very strongly we can get this done. And, um, you know, obviously the Dabrowski family, um, Ed, Beth, and um, Vicky. Vicky would, you know, obviously uh, venerable people in Webster, and we want to make sure that we do right by them. You know, I, I think at the appropriate time, please let uh, Kelly know, and we can all sign our letter of support between Rick and the, and the Board of Selectmen as well. So yeah, something that needs to be done, should have been done, but we not, you know more how legislation goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah <it laughs> or doesn't often, go. <laughs> often takes years and years for even the most non-controversial piece of legislation to get passed. Uh, in the context behind that is that there's some five or 6,000 bills that get filed each session. So simply getting through the the number of bills and weeding out what needs to pass is, is a monumental task. So there's a, some context to that. And I, I know Randy had mentioned the um, Brandon Road Hill Street Bridge. And while I don't have any direct updates, I, I was chatting with several of the boards of, of selectmen members from Dudley on our Veterans Day March. And my recollection from past conversations is that Dudley was kind of taking the lead on it as the bridge is physically located in Dudley. And the sense that I got from them is that they're ready to jump, and it's the state, no surprise really, that is um, dragging feet and <coughs> not allowing them to move as quickly as they would like. Um, so with that in mind, I wasn't able to speak with anyone. I know, I know Senator Fatman wasn't able to speak with anyone from DOT um, between Friday and today, but we're happy to reach out and, and give a, a firm push in the right direction to try and let them know that the, the towns are ready to move just give us the, the necessary approvals and permissions. Yeah, and perhaps that's, you know, available for ARPA as well, so. Yeah, do, you, do you have any idea whether yourselves or Rick with regards to, um, is it gonna be a complete demo and brand new bridge? Is it going to just I, I'm upgrade? told by uh, Mr. Ruta that it, it's going to be a complete demo. That's, what, that's his belief as of last week. Is it also for a temporary replacement, or is it a permanent? It, it, permanent. Permanent. Permanent replacement. replacement. Yes. So we won't be able to use uh, that road for probably another year or two longer. If all <coughs> if all goes years. well. Probably a couple of years. Yeah. If all goes well, yes. Because obviously it's having a, a great impact, negative impact on mm. Main Street. Uh, yeah. You know, on occasion I'll go down Perryville Road and take. The bridge over that way into Schofield, but that's, yeah. that's out of the way for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, I, I formerly lived, and I know Ryan did as well, on the, the southern side of School Street, and any time I was heading west, I used that bridge. So, yep. you know, certainly a heavy traffic area. Uh, and as you mentioned, alleviates a lot of Main Street congestion that otherwise exists. And just <laughs> navigating the other day, for Veterans Day, from Southbridge to get back to Webster, I was thinking, oh, that's how I'm going to cut through. And then I said, oh, geez, I, I can't do that. Yeah. So I had to go back around. We also have the risk of uh, the trucks that, that have to go down that hill in the winter. Yeah. yeah. All right. Off of the water sewer. Yeah. To get, to, get to the water sewer. Especially the treatment. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of water supply, <coughs> and I'll follow up with this meeting with an email. There are two smallish grants that Mass DEP has uh, come forward with. I don't know if Webster qualifies for either. One is for small system PFAS grants. Unfortunately, uh, it's for public and private water systems serving less than 3,300 members. So I, I'm fairly certain we don't qualify there. And then the other one is a sewage grant, um, and it's making uh, funding available to come into compliance with 314 CMR 16, which is buried in mass regulation, and it um, allows for design and implementation of notification systems, um, metering, and consultation services. Um, the caveat there is that those who have received grants in previous cycles aren't eligible. So I, I don't know exactly where the eligibility for Webster would be on that, but. As I said, I'll, I'll be happy to forward that sure. to Rick, Courtney, and yep. Randy on behalf of the board. Um, yeah. Anything helps. Is there, uh, can you comment on anything with regards to private well legislation? I mean, we're blessed here. I think we have, really, correct me, 90 to 95 percent 
of the town having town water, we're maybe 90%. Yeah, yeah, it's um, close so to we do, 90, yeah. Yeah, we do have, um, you know, a number of areas with private wells. Any PFAS uh, funding or legislation that you see coming down the line to help test private wells? I believe that DEP will test private wells at no cost to the homeowner, but I'm, I will get more details because I don't know exactly how that is. Yeah, maybe that's something you can let Rick know and, and we can offer it. I, I know they've done that. Uh, I've seen for small systems. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, uh, sometimes the results are not very helpful to a homeowner <laughs> well, for a small water say. system. That's what I was going to say. Sometimes. No, it, I'm of the belief that having information is always valuable. However, if you test a small system and all of a sudden find out that you need to incur a massive expense mm. to repair, either as a homeowner or a small neighborhood association or what have you, um, and then you get an order from MassDEP that your water is unsanitary or whatnot, that could ultimately cause more problems than it might solve. So Just yeah, have I, to appreciate what the outcome may be. Yeah. That's all. Right. I, I know on another board that I'm on, between 5 and 10 percent of the wells tested had PFAS 6 mm -hmm. uh, amounts that were over the recommended level. So we know it's out there, sadly. Yeah. And, and I think uh, the drum's starting to beat on the sewer end of it, too, and, and that's going to affect Webster because uh, we have PFAS and so does Dudley, and they, you know, we process their, their sewers. So. Um, we're going to have to come up with some mutual uh, solutions there. And yeah. it, it seems to be a real failure in the thought process about this type of infrastructure um, yep. long term. Yep. I mean, we've, the Commonwealth's done a fairly decent job with the school systems, with MSBA. Library has a, you know, libraries have a program, but water systems and public safety buildings don't have yeah. um, any sort of state <clears throat> help. And that is something that has been on at least our radar for the last session. Um, and I do think that there's going to be some significant solutions offered in the next year or two uh, because of the prevalence of the issue and how it's affected so many communities, especially smaller suburban ones yep. um, that don't necessarily always have the resources as larger cities might to um, address them financially. So hopefully um, we'll see some progress on that. I know that we'll be working hard to make sure that that happens. Be good. Thank you. Mm. With the with the change in administration, do you coming in January? Do you see any um, you know differences in how um, you know towns and cities are handled? I would I would hope that it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or unenrolled. Um, and I would I would expect that. But any comments on that? <clears throat> I, one of the things that um, I give the Baker Polito a lot, administration a lot of credit for is that they were both individuals who served on their boards of selectmen and mm -hmm. they um, felt very particular about their relationship with municipal government uh, and prioritizing it. I think that's left to be seen and very hopeful. Um, you know, the attorney general ran very similar to how the governor ran in four and eight years ago. So hopefully that, that's a sign of um, the status quo because I think that that relationship has been very good. Um, whether or not you're going to see, you know, these municipal compacts and grant opportunities, I'm not sure about that. Um, that was their uh, baby, if you will. But, and I know Webster participated in that. We had the lieutenant governor mm -hmm. come here uh, a long and time se ago. Several of them, right? Yeah, right. yep. Um, but so I know for me, when I ran the first time, my concentration was on municipal budgets and making sure that municipalities were well funded. <laughs> Um, or fairly funded, and that's always going to be my priority um, as far as budgetary items go. And I will say there seems to be a, a strong respect and mutual respect between the outgoing administration and Maura Healy as our Attorney General. They've always seemed to work well together, and I, I'm hopeful and perhaps optimistic that she will recognize those uh, parts of their administration that were tremendously successful, which is especially the community compact program and adopt them. Um, she seems to be a savvy enough politician to know that, you know, this is an easy way to get local support and they've got the infrastructure in place. So I do expect a transition between the administrations to be relatively smooth. And again, I'm hopeful that she'll pick up where they left off and, and continue supporting uh, our cities and towns. 
Uh, we're running a little bit beyond us. Any questions? Just a quick yeah. question. Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. On, on Route 16, <coughs> the intersection there, I know there was some, uh, uh, is there any progress uh, the taking place? The exit, yeah. Yeah. Old exit, exit two. Exit, yeah, one, two, whichever number it is. Three yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, three now. Yeah. Um, I don't have any update recently. So I was recently with Barry Lorian, um, who's a District 3 director in Sturbridge, and he referenced that there was something coming soon um, because we were talking about roundabouts and stoplights and all this in Sturbridge, which is a new territory for me. And, um, you know, he, bent, he did reference it, so I will follow up with them because I, I honestly can't remember, Earl, um, what, what was said, but I believe there's some um, progress being made towards that. Yeah, I think Rick and I had had some conversations a month or so ago. They're heading close, I think, to the 75%? Yeah. 80% design, design, 80 design yes. Design. Yes, and that was uh, and, uh, and believed land, to be by the, by the end of October. Right. So I'm um, not sure if that's exactly on schedule, but as I notified the board previously, the state has uh, accepted the responsibility for easements, uh, permanent, temporary, probably all temporary. So that was a huge load off the town's back because there's about 15 properties, um, I think about eight property owners that, uh, that the, the, either the town or the state would have to deal with. So we're very happy the state took that responsibility. That's great. Tom, did you have a yeah, I just had a question on PFAS. Is there any legislation um, that's out there to prevent the uh, spread of PFAS into the environment and or uh, minimize the exposure to people like firefighters? I know there is. Um, off the top of my head, I will not be able to recite it, but I will get you an email um, that has a whole category of some of the various pieces of legislation. Um, last when we were with the firefighters up in District 7 in Shrewsbury, I know that that was a topic that was discussed, and um, I think that uh, that was when Kate Hogan, the state representative from, where's she from, Stowe? Yeah, so somewhere, area, somewhere um, had made the commitment to trying to help with both public water systems and with our firefighters and making sure that they're protected. Yeah, and, and to interject really quickly, what she was talking about was taking the various legislation that exists and yeah. putting together an omnibus bill that will address all aspects of PFAS, whether it's sewer, water supply, firefighter safety, cancer screening for firefighters. Um, you know, it'll, it'll cover a, a broad swath of PFAS and its impacts. Um, that has yet to be written, but it'll take the the number of bills and put them together. There's probably several dozen uh, very similar bills. So, okay. so maybe just for the public's knowledge, the fact that uh, the firefighters have the waterproof yes. clothing, yep. um, you know, obviously heat proof and fire resistant clothing and, and fire retardant uh, foam, yep. which I think has been eliminated now from yeah. all towns. Um, so they, were, they did have quite exposure. I know, Don, you were a firefighter for many years, thank you. Um, so and, I'm and sure I do you're know aware that, of it too. Yeah. And I do know that Webster benefited from a, a grant to remove the PFAS contaminated foam. Mm -hmm. The problem was that there was no money to then refill with right. non PFAS safe foam, so that's uh, left us with a, a shortage there. But at least the PFAS contain, containing material is no longer in use. And Unless I just they had taketh one, away, we're <laughs> hoping that they give us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I had one more brief, almost accidental update, um, and it was started from a either Veterans Day or a Memorial Day parade several years ago. And I noticed the big Coca-Cola mural that is faded on a building. And I actually have a cousin who's a, an executive with Coke. And at a family Christmas party, offhandedly, I said, "Oh, you know, Webster's got a couple of murals popping up in town. They're really cool. There's this really old faded Coke one. That'd be cool if you guys came in and repainted it." didn't hear anything from him for close to two years and then uh, recently I was with him and he said oh by the way I got approval to do your mural and I said oh okay that's interesting so he had mentioned that he'd been working with one of our uh, fabulous carols in town I, I don't recall whether it was Carol Sear or Carol Marchand Carol who <laughs> For the record, they're both fabulous. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So he had been working with Carol Sear as far as getting um, permits and approvals in place. Uh, and Randy uh, mentioned to me on the Veterans Day parade that it was worth bringing up because I see it as more of an artistic mural, but it is still an advertisement and there are bylaws in town that may be implicated uh, or impacted. So just something to have on the radar. Um, 
Yeah, I think that it's that it's um, going to be probably less at five cents a, a Coke could probably be nostalgic, historic, and not advertising. But <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that to well, the town administrator. Right. And there is the question outstanding of whether the town even wants that. That was just me talking to a cousin saying, "Oh, that'd be kind of cool." It's up to you, uh, you know, representing the town, to determine whether we do in fact want it. That's something I looked at for 25 years out of my office. I, I personally would love to see it. Yeah, I think it would be cool. So in any case, uh, he came back two years later and said, Coke is on board. So <laughs> I thought that was pretty interesting. And I think hey, that's they've great. recently done one, um, I don't remember the town, but it's not too far away. Or something like that. Yeah, where well, they've actually renovated a sign like that on a building. Yeah, and for anyone not familiar, it's the building is 228 Main Street, and you can see the mural as you're heading east on Main Street. and. It's a pretty sizable mural. I think it's combined with Horton Furniture, and there might be a Rassica, furniture. Rassica, Rassica Brothers, yeah. right? Yeah. Rassica Brothers. So, great. Yeah. Any further questions for our senator? I would just Senate? point out that uh, we certainly will be getting you a list of those capital items that are near and dear to us that affect really all multiple departments, schools, uh, seniors, and I know those have been areas that um, you've been successful in the past trying to get us some funding for. Um, so we have a lot of needs, mm -hmm. and we'll be letting you know those. Um, the other thing I would just like to uh, point out while we're briefly on the topic that uh, um, really do appreciate the efforts of our uh, outgoing administration and your efforts with them. I don't think uh, we worked with several administrations and they've all been really good to local government, but the outreach um, by this administration is really fabulous. And we hope we continue to see that with the new administration. Um, and certainly to the extent that you can help make that happen, we appreciate that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think there's anybody in the state, local official, who doesn't know the Lieutenant Governor. I mean, that's whether you, whatever the politics you are, everyone knows the lieutenant governor in this state. So yeah. let's keep that going. She Absolutely. made it a, a, a point of, of her tenure throughout oh, her yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. tenure as lieutenant governor. So. And I think it's good to point out, too, that the new lieutenant governor is a former right. mayor. Local governor, mayor of, exactly. And so local yeah. government. So mm -hmm. i got to believe she will take the same steps as the current lieutenant governor to make sure that our municipalities are heard. Well, I'm sure you'll both have her on speed dial. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? Otherwise, I think we'll wrap this up. And thank you very much for both thank coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Us. Thank you very and, much. Uh, maybe we'll do it in a half a year or a year, not, yeah, not, not a couple not of years. Three years. No more COVID. No that's more right. COVID, absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Uh, next item is discussion of and possible vote to hold a hearing on the alleged liquor law violation at the Polish American Citizens Club, 37 Harris Street, Webster, Mass., Police report states that alcohol was being served in an area outside of the designated serving premises. Uh, and I do believe um, Deputy, uh, Deputy, Deputy Chief, Chief, not going to demote you yet. <laughs> Chief, do you want to come on up here and maybe give, um, we've, we've got information in our packages uh, on page nine that we were provided by Kelly and Rick and Courtney. Uh, maybe give us a brief intro to this. And I think we have a gentleman here Come on up if you'd like. Yeah, so well, this was uh, this was something that Sergeant Brooks encountered. Uh, there was several reports about disturbances, some kind of a car show going on. Um, he arrived up there, and there was some there was some al alcohol being served and consumed outside. And you know, to our knowledge, there was no permit for that. I had never you know I was called by Deputy Chief Wheeler, who was contacted by the sergeant. And uh, I hadn't signed any permits. Sergeant, uh, the deputy chief hadn't signed any permits in my absence while I was gone. So, to my understanding, uh, there wasn't supposed to be any alcohol being served outside. What somewhat complicated this situation was uh, the bar manager, I believe it was Carlene Rosario, was telling them they had spoken with Courtney at the town hall and the ABCC was involved. So, I'm not super familiar with how these licenses go outside of the town. I didn't think that that was happened, but I wasn't sure. So at that point, we didn't make any um, attempts to shut them down. I would further, I said that I would further investigate it, but if you see in your package, there's clearly pictures where alcohol was being served. And after following up with uh, Courtney, that was that no permit was issued by the town or the ABCC, so I'm not sure where that came from. There was a question as far as, I guess there was a COVID um, clause where some clubs could have gotten a license that you know, that would have happened under uh, the previous town administrator, and that was how it was left, I don't believe, but I don't believe that was ever the case. Either. Yeah, I think that particular policy, the Board of Selectmen right. gave the authority to the town administrator to issue outdoor licenses 
uh, to businesses, clubs that asked for them. Right. So I'm not sure. Uh, is it Mr. Mrachek? Yes. Okay. So we, we have the president or yes, head of the PACC right. here. So um, we'll just finish up with Chief Shaw. So um, I, according to our records, no one had ever contacted the town That's correct. to have yes. any uh, outside uh, alcohol permits. And this obviously isn't the first time we've had issues with alcohol being consumed outside on the property of the PACC. Uh, and I would just... Uh, Caution that this is not a public public hearing. Correct. This is not the. I know you're cautious. Yeah, there's no about fact this. finding Correct. here. That's We're just having a discussion to determine whether or not we want to um, yes, have so end up having a public hearing. Yes. So, yes. But, so I submitted but, the reports to you for your. Correct. Consideration. Yeah, and with that said, we did we did want to be fair and, and offer uh, Mr. Mrachek to come here and and talk a little bit about it. Um, so, Chief, are you all set? Otherwise, I'll. Yeah. I'm, Okay, anyone on the Board of Selectmen have any questions? I just mentioned that some of the police calls that you received uh, were, were complaints of noise as well. Yes, there was yeah. some kind of a car show. I don't know it was there were radios involved or you know, driving erratically. Uh, we got, we got a, I want to say th there were three calls to the station that day regarding that, that type of behavior. And I, I know that they, they did say that they were going to be done and not have that, that type of event again. Okay, thank you. Mr. Maracho. <clears throat> That event is supposed to be only car show, but this gentleman who set it up, he brought it some kind of competition who had the better stereo in the car, and I never see anything like it. They blast the music, you could you know, hear it the other side of the town. So he said no more, absolutely no more, that kind of deals. Now, in October 23rd, 2013, because previous board had a license suspended, me and attorney Bridgman went to Boston three times. In one occasion, they asked me to draw a map where the alcohol is gonna be served outside. I drew the map, brought it to Boston, for approval, it was approved. I got the uh, correspondence from Elizabeth Marshall. Thank you last month that this and she sent me this what was approved on 213. Now once upon a time so Mr. Rachek this is something that was drawn up in 2013 and yes, was sir. recently she sent to you. She sent it back to me about a month ago. And and what was the individual's name? What was the individual's name? Elizabeth Marshall. From okay, yeah, and we won't need it now, but, but um, the chief or Rick may need it in the future. Once upon a time, this booth, what you see there, it's, it's a third point to have a picnic. On the weekends, they play a lot of games. Young guys coming up, they play volleyball, they play soccer, so make a long story short, he is a four licenses issued from town of Webster. Every single one of them, they all do the hold up. Every single one, it says basement, first floor, and the terrace. So the licenses were issued by a town. Somehow, I think that or whatever it was, that, you know, they, you can, you can read it, every one of them has a, as a, you know, a place and service, and it says, yeah. you can serve it. Yeah. Um, Courtney's pointing out the that the, the licenses are in your packet, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Sure, yeah. And this one is from the state of Massachusetts. I only don't get one copy. But it also says, serving in the terrace, so the licenses were there, with somehow, is it type error, or, or secretary just type it up, you know, miss that portion, the license were issued. I think that was, <coughs> I'm nervous. So Mr. Marachek, what is the terrace? Is that a, is that like a porch? It's, a, it's outside, on the right side, it's all fenced in, it's a huge, like, brushes, trees, it, it, and it's, you know, it's pavement, so I think they call the terrace that pavement between those two boots outside when they serve the 
food and a beer from the other booth. That was put it in, I guess, since 1908. That's how it's always been done. And it's completely secluded from the street. There's no, you know, it's a building, then you got a huge tree. There was one neighbor, Tony Horezny, He's he just called me today too. He says he never had a problem, but it is what it is. So I, I think what we need to do is, um, it, it seems to be your contention that you have permission exactly. to serve where the alcohol was served. And I think there's now a, a question as to whether or not the license actually extends to that area. So I think you know we're going to have to, between uh, Rick and, and Chief Shaw and Courtney, uh, having handled the ABCC for ever, I think, as long as I've been here, um, you know, try and dig up some facts from the town standpoint and see where the, uh, uh, at least where the town believes serving should uh, happen. Questions from I, the board? I, I think also, uh, I don't know where you took pictures, but the part that's not demarcated, the, the parking area yes. near the door to the uh, bar room downstairs, there were drinking occurring. Yeah. There. Yeah, I, I'm a neighbor. You see right here, <laughs> this is no, every time I'm there, this is a line, yellow light. The line. No, 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 I'm talking about this goes to Spring Street. Yeah. There was cars and drinking there, right over here in this area. Initially, see, initially that was included in the state. Oh, it was? Yeah, and it says in here, but for that particular reason, we put it two lines here and here because if people parking and carry the drinks, they're coming out from the inside basement. <coughs> So we put in no drinking beyond this point, no drinking beyond this point, only in the back. Oh. That's how it's, but in the state, that's, that, was all, that square was all included. Yeah, so in the, just for the record, in the 1964 actual license, license, this is a new building, same address, building at 37 Harris Street, basement, first floor, in Terrace, um, right. in, in 1964. Was, I'm not sure what, I don't believe any of that is listed in our, Current license? Yeah, I think. Uh, Again, I'm, sh I'm not sure if the, what happened, um, what's now 58 years ago. Um, is the same as what's on the license now. The, the license, the one that's in the packet says, on the following described premises, one and a half story building, first floor with terrace, comma, basement. So the word terrace is in there. Yeah. And then, you know, from a common definition of terrace, I would think that that would be a, similar to a porch. Um, so, you know, I guess my suggestion is that um, uh, Chief Shar and, and Rick and Courtney get together um, and try and make a determination as to whether or not um, there's sufficient reason to have a public hearing and then uh, I think you know Rick will let us know and if it needs to be put on an agenda we'll you know we'll do that if not um, at a minimum there needs to be clarification as far as where alcohol consumption can take place um, Earl I think you indicated that there was alcohol consumption that you've seen and there I saw, yeah. um, you know, on, on the other side, not on what would be a terrace. Um, so, Chief, you probably haven't seen this. Uh, I'm not sure if you have or haven't seen no, this. No, I haven't seen that, no. So, you know, I think we'll have to give the, give the Chief and, right, and Rick and Courtney, Courtney some time. So, so going forward then, the Chief and Courtney and I will get together and perhaps with whomever on the department is you deem appropriate, um, determine be clear on what the uh, boundaries are and then re then at that time we'll speak to the chair and the chair can decide whether or not to schedule a hearing or do you want this to come back to the full board for this kind no, of I, I, would, I would ask the i would ask yeah. the um selectman if the chair and vice chair mm -hmm. would be able to make that determination so okay if that's okay okay very good okay anything further mr Marchek? No, I'm also, thank you chief shaw courtney anything further Thanks. Thanks. Right, Chief. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, now you can go celebrate you. with your fine officers. Yes. So thank you for staying. Mm. Yeah. Uh, next item is the personnel board update. Chairperson Elaine, Dr. Elaine Davies is here. Um, for the record, my beautiful sister-in-law. Um, 
eldest of four. <laughs> now for something totally different. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks, Elaine, for all your work on the board. Thank you to the uh, personal advisory board. I know that they've been very active with Rick and with Courtney and appreciate your coming up and giving us an update. And I'll maybe ga gain you two minutes. <laughs> Good evening and uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to provide a status report on the, the work of the personnel advisory board. Uh, I last appeared before you on June 14th, 2021, so over a year ago. Uh, and that was after the PAB had reviewed the implementation of the personnel policies. And at that time, I discussed the work that had been done primarily to establish the policies, and then I remarked on several human resource management needs. Among them, an HR focal point, the need for position descriptions, a performance evaluation program, and a succession plan, as well as a look at emergencies. I don't know if it was me, but Doug was gone in two months. <laughs> I think it was when I unrolled the chart that showed he had 15 direct reports. <laughs> but in any case, that sort of slowed the process down until we got Rick. Um, but I want you to know we were not idle during that time. In fact, I want to thank the PAB members for their dedication, and I want to remind you who they are. Your BOS representatives are Pat Nectow and Candace Shivers. Sarah Sansom and Joss Derzala are from the Finance Committee. Jennifer Finley uh, is a town moderator position, and of course, Rick. Our thanks also go to Courtney for her help, especially in setting up a website for us recently. So we're on the map, and we're very proud of that. <laughs> we are very happy that Rick is on board. He certainly has demonstrated his understanding of and his support for a strong human resources management program. And I'm certainly enjoying working with him and with Courtney. So on to the report. First, we are pleased that there now is a focal point for HR, the assistant town administrator position that Courtney holds. Now one of the points we made while opining on the budget this year is that her position is really a crucial position. And there's lots of work that comes with it. For example, a continuous assessment of the town's human resource management system to identify gaps and needs in policy, procedures, and processes, as well as keeping up on all the new legislation, state-of-the-art practices to help improve our work and our workforce. And that means ensuring that there is other support to do the administrative parts of the job. And we hope that finding that support is going to continue. And Courtney, we're here for you. <laughs> Second, we're delighted that Rick has reached out to the Collins Center at the University of Massachusetts. We've been working with them on the classification and the wages study, and now they'll be embarking on a personnel review. A big thank you goes to the town for voting the resources for this study. The Collins Center brings not only a lot of information and knowledge about Massachusetts towns, but I also think they can bring to bear the weight of academia. I have to say that because of the doctor <laughs> thing. <laughs> the, the latest trends, the techniques, the policies, at least I'm hopeful on that. Now regarding the classification and wages study, uh, we were briefed on the draft and we're awaiting the final. And I have to admit the one disappointment was that for several reasons the study took longer than we'd hoped it would. But the good news is that the town finally has a consistent set of position descriptions outlining the work that has to be done. And when we met last week or a few days before that, Rick and Courtney were taking one more last look at those position descriptions. And there may be some union discussion but we are almost there. <clears throat> then it's gonna be up to the usual supervisory process uh, to ensure that the work needed gets done. The study provides useful information on wages, and I think it's gonna be really good for succession planning, very helpful in succession planning. A few thoughts on the review of the personnel system. I think it's going to be good to have the Collins Center take a look at the total human resource management system in Webster. In the past, the PAB identified some areas for work. For example, automating 
human resource management information in Munis. But I think the center has an ability to scan the environment and see what we may have missing. And more than that, I hope that they're going to be able to see how the landscape has shifted after the pandemic. Uh, has the workforce changed uh, or needs changed, resulting in the need for different policies or procedures? Before Rick arrived, um, we had some discussions on onboarding and training programs, and so we're looking forward to seeing what the results of the review are going to be, because that's pretty much going to set the agenda for, for what needs to be done. Um, also last year, I mentioned the emergencies section of our policies, uh, which you know they need to be updated because they only deal with weather. <laughs> and we know after COVID, that's not enough. But, and I still think a revision is needed, but uh, it incorporates a lot more than there's just personnel. I mean, there's legal authority, continuity of operations, so it's not just our bailiwick, but I have to say that. One area of concern we mentioned last year, and we see progress in this year, is uh, a performance evaluation program. Rick's been working with the department heads on a process for them that includes goals and performance discussions, and the next step is to develop one for the rest of the employees working with the union and it's needed. So there's still some work that has to be done. Um, there is a performance evaluation program that is written into the policies. So that means that changes are going to have to be incorporated into the personnel policies. And those aren't up for a PAB review until 2024, but they should be updated annually. I want to end by talking about the PAB and the bylaw that authorizes that, Section 217. Uh, the current bylaw was crafted, I think, in 1988, and it needs revision. I truly believe that the PAB adds value. There was no PAB for a long time, and when it reappeared, it found no consistent policies and lots of gaps in, process, in the processes. So I, I guess I see us as the cheap nudgers. <laughs> Not doing the work, even though we did it in the past because we were guilty for those personnel policies, but advising on the policies and practices and identifying needs and keeping those in front of you and the town for action that's needed. We've drafted a bylaw revision uh, which primarily brings the term limit for members from two years to three, which is consistent with other boards and, and committees. Uh, and it recognizes our advisory role rather than a regulatory role, emphasizing our ability to uh, conduct studies and look broadly across the process and assist with the development of policies as needed. We've sent a draft to the bylaw committee and we hope to go to the town with that in the spring. Now this is only meant to be a brief update. Um, I don't want you to forget that the PAB is here. We are here and we're working. And I hope to appear in June with more. And hopefully by then much of this will be fully implemented and we'll have a new agenda based on the personnel review. I note that uh, while we have a full complement of members now, I think you have us down one. I know somebody resigned in the last week. I think we're okay. I think we're full. Um, there will be vacancies next year. And so I urge any of my fellow citizens who have expertise in human resources to step forward, consider volunteering for the board. It's really rewarding, the work's important, and the people are absolutely wonderful. So thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. What words did you say, Chief Nudger? Oh. That's right. <laughs> Chief, yeah. nudge. Chief Nudge. You, the good news is you saved me some time in my report tonight. So you, you, oh, you said a lot of it, so thank you. Right. Uh, thank you. And, and I have one question. Yeah. Good. Um, how, how receptive was the, uh, was the department heads in working through this uh, process with you? Well, this is a, a Rick question, I think. Which, okay. which specifically? The, uh, uh, specifically, uh, the job, the job evaluation process. The, well, the, uh, the evaluation. There's two pieces. One is our non-union department heads, and other non-union, um, and then there's the uh, the piece that would apply to our uh, administrative unions. Mm -hmm. uh, that's still to be done. 
Um, our position description uh, have been drafted, reviewed, and there's only, you know, basically last look before they're implemented. It's probably going to take some conversations with uh, unions to implement updated position descriptions. Um, at that time, we'll be instituting a performance appraisal tool uh, that will, uh, while it's not necessary, we'll certainly look to uh, um, have the group cooperate, cooperate with us to make sure we've got a tool that everybody feels comfortable with. As far as our department heads, uh, we've, um, we did have a, um, we developed a product that was uh, put together by a subcommittee of our department heads. I um, mean, we've actually uh, re reviewed pretty much all of our department heads at, the, at this, this time. So it's, I think, um, and I would, uh, Courtney would also tell you that it's worked out very well. People are very receptive, pretty much because um, it's not a, uh, uh, it's not a check the boxes. It's goals, objectives, uh, your achievements, um, what can we do to help, um, and ultimately it's going to be a filtering down of what the board's goals are. Um, down, you know, down to the uh, department heads and beyond. So um, they're very happy with, with what we're doing because they, again, it gives them a lot of respect for their positions and their accomplishments. Uh, so, Good to hear. And, and we're very happy that you have position descriptions. <laughs> and a performance evaluation process would be the crown. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think people have to realize this is a business. You know, yeah. most businesses of, of any size um, you know, want to make sure that they set goals uh, for their employees, they evaluate their employees, they have job descriptions for their employees, and it's just not something I think the town has taken a lot of time to do. So, you yeah. know, again, I applaud the personal advisory board, you know, for, for being there to help. It's, it's I, I know when I was in the corporate world, it was kind of the bane of my existence, though. Yeah. Once a year I have to sit down and yeah. do all those evaluations, but they're really important. And it's, it's, you have to be fair to the employees that work here uh, to make sure that we take the time to do that. So thank you. And Courtney, you may have to be deputized to, uh, <laughs> you know, you see the sure. chief about that, to make sure that these evaluations and job descriptions uh, get <laughs> done. So thank you, Elaine. Chief Nudger. Thank you. Any it's other been, questions? Yes. From the board? It, it has been a pleasure working with the chair of the PAB. I will, I would not let that go unstated. <laughs> she didn't <either>. <laughs> <laughs> Rick said it was a pleasure working with you. It's been a pleasure working with you. All right. Thank you again, Elaine. Uh, next item on our agenda is a public hearing for uh, Brookside Ave. I believe we have National Grid uh, on the phone. Sorry to keep you waiting. Who do we have from National Grid, please? Are they still on the phone? Is someone from National Grid on the phone? Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, I can hear you. If not, we not not to worry. We do have uh, we do need to open up a public hearing. Uh, they have submitted the information. National Grid has submitted us uh, the information for these uh, two areas. Hopefully, they'll jump on if there are any questions. But could I have a motion to open the public hearing in accordance with our agenda? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, so we do we do have to have a public hearing when we do have these uh, poll hearings. Um, is there anyone from the audience that wishes to speak about this particular one, uh, which is off of Brookside Ave? Um, anyone hearing none? Anyone uh, from National Grid that would like to speak on this? Sure, if they're there or not, but we do have the submission here as far as where the polls go. Any anyone of uh, the selectmen or Rick, Courtney or Kelly, any questions on this? Okay, we do we do indicate, um, and I'm not sure if we can put this up on online. We do have a map on our page. It's on page 23 of our package, so we can see that the new poll um, is set to be placed uh, on a, on the bend in the road of Brookside Ave. Uh, in front of 30 Brookside Ave. Uh, so it's depicted yeah. in our package. That's on page 23. All right, thanks, Rick. So we can see there in that 
kind of middle of the page on the left-hand side, upper left now, 30 Brookside Ave. Any uh, questions with regards to the request for the poll location? Any, com any other comments? If not, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it is unanimous. So now that we've got the public hearing closed, uh, we need to discuss whether or not we want to approve this. Any discussion on that? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve as described in our agenda and in our package. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is unanimous. Okay, next one is uh, another similar public hearing with regards to National Grid. This is on Old Worcester Road. We can see, uh, I'll read it on the agenda, to request to install four JO poles on Old Worcester Road beginning at a point approximately 300 feet northwest of the center line of the intersection of Harry's Way and continuing approximately 15 feet on a westerly direction. Installing four 40 class two poles for a new three phase commercial service to 15 Old Webster Road. Uh, I'd like a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Aye. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is a unanimous vote. So we are in the public hearing. Any questions, comments from the audience with regards to the poll hearing for Old Worcester Road by Harry's Way? Okay. Uh, National Grid, if you can hear me, <laughs> anything to add? I know we do have it, all our information in writing. Um, it's not required that they be on, just you know, for the record. We do have the map where we indicate uh, if anyone's familiar with Old Worcester Road, as you're heading up on the left of this map, you're heading down towards St. Joseph's Cemetery. Um, any questions? You can see the uh, four pole demarcations with the circle half open, half uh, darkened circles there. Any, any questions or comments from the board? Okay, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Check. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it is a unanimous vote to close the public hearing. Uh, now we need a vote uh, with regards to authorizing as per our agenda, the four. And to polls. approve. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approval as per the agenda to install the four polls, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it is a unanimous vote. Okay, that brings us down to um, public hearing request to approve the BYOB application submitted by Burlap to Board, 75 Main Street, Webster, Mass, for paint and sip night. In our package here, this is on page 28 of our package. Do we have anyone here? Come on up, if you don't mind. You just Sorry to keep you both waiting. Your, your, your government is working uh, a little slower than it should tonight. <laughs> if you don't mind, if you just introduce yourself, please. I'm Robert Putnam. My wife, Sherry. Sure. Uh, we're the owners of Burlap the Boards. All right, great. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we do have the information in our package. Um, when you submitted it, it ended up raising a question for us. When we had our meeting, uh, Earl and myself, uh, Kelly and Courtney and Rick, to go over the agenda, um, it raised a question with regards to, is this something that's needed? Is it needed in the sense that, do you need approval from the Board of, of Selectmen in order to have a paint night where you serve alcohol? Uh, and people bring oh, their own- we're not serving alcohol. No, I'm sorry, yeah, my, my apologies. Where, where people are allowed to bring their own alcohol. Correct. Um, so we got into the discussion uh, of our own BYOB package. Um, and it, it seems so it really only pertains to a place that has a common VIC if they're serving food and they have a license to serve food. So um, Rick and Courtney did reach out to our uh, uh, KP Law uh, expert, and I don't know if you want to maybe touch on that, Rick? Just uh, briefly, I did send the board uh, a copy of uh, the legal advice, and as the chairman mentioned, a, a BYOB uh, is generally something that's extended to a uh, an institute, uh, an establishment that's uh, 
already ho has a common victual license but not an alcohol license or an establishment that's uh, essentially in limbo waiting for the ABCC to approve a license that's been granted locally. Uh, as far as whether or not the Board of Selectmen um, you know, has the authority to or wishes to adopt the authority to issue BYOB licenses to private properties that aren't in one of those two classifications. Uh, that's a question for the board. Uh, that's not something that's uh, in, ingrained in statute that this, this type of authority for the board of selectmen. So realistically, it's a matter of whether or not the board wishes to assume that responsibility or st uh, stick strictly with their policy and statute. So in the past, we've had uh, BYOB requests or one-day license requests, let's say, from uh, some of our parishes in town for a one-day license, liquor license. Um, this is kind of the first time we've really taken a look at it and said, do we really need to be involved? <laughs> Good timing. Um, in, in reading the information from Attorney Kobo uh, from KP Law, he's advising the board that we probably don't want to assume that additional responsibility uh, in, uh, in requiring BYOB licenses for a business that doesn't have a common VIC, doesn't serve food, et cetera. So that's really, I think, a discussion here at the board. Uh, it's being recommended, and, and it's Rick's recommendation as well, that we really don't need to get involved in issuing B BYOBs in these types of circumstances. Um, so I, I'm gonna open it up to the board Again, Rick is recommending this, and Attorney Corbo is also recommending it from KP that we, you know, kind of take a hands-off approach in this type of situation where there's not a common VIC license, there's no food being served, and and when we talked in our in our meeting, uh, looking at the agenda, you know, we thought of it: what happens in a private residence? You have a party, you have a paint night in a private residence. Um, you know, no one's going to come to the board to ask for a BYOB. Um, if you have a paint night at one of the local restaurants, well, they generally will have a liquor license, so it's covered under the, their liquor license. Only in those situations where you're serving food and a place doesn't necessarily have a liquor license would someone come for a BYOB, or a restaurant that doesn't have a, a beer and wine license or a full liquor license might ask the board for a BYOB, uh, in which case we have issued those yeah. in the past. So, um, I'm, I apologize for all the confusion about this, but you've actually helped us out in determining, you know, where we should yeah. go with it. So, so, so are you basically just saying we don't need? Yeah, I, I think that might be where we end up. What we want to do is okay. maybe just discuss whether or not we think the town, through the Board of Selectmen, need to adopt a policy, or we just say, listen, it's beyond the scope of, of uh, you know, what we think we need to do, which is basically what our attorney uh, that advises the town on these matters in what Rick is uh, recommending. So I'm sorry, Don. That's okay. Uh, through the chair, Courtney, who assumes the responsibility for a business that is not required to have a liquor license, but they want to have a, what is it, a sip and see or a paint? paint sip. Those types paint of sip. things. Uh, paint yeah. and sip. <laughs> what, paint, and, paint and sip, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So who is he's obviously not an artist. He's never been to a painting. <laughs> no, 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 I'll never. No, he doesn't play what I'm telling because, because we have we had someone on Thompson Road who did that at one point, and I remember going there one time and having alcohol, but she didn't have a liquor license. She's no longer there. But who assumes the responsibility? The business owner. Right. Right, and, and in this case, the business isn't serving, thus the request right. for the BYOB. Right. And nor you're applying, you know you're offering them cups or anything of that nature. They bring they their bring own, everything. They exactly. pay for the painting and all that stuff. Correct, and correct. You want to sit there and have a wine, then exactly. have a wine. What, what purpose would we serve by being involved? Um, you know, I, I think as it's laid out in, in here, um, we might, we don't have authority to say you have to get a, uh, an insurance policy for it. Right. We would set some policies, say maybe you can only have so many people. Um, I really don't know why we would end up yeah, creating a policy, mm -hmm. especially when it's being recommended not to. 
Right. I mean, you, as you know, you have a policy, but it's it's essentially consistent with, with the ABCC regulations. It, it doesn't try to go beyond that in any uh, meaningful way. Uh, and both ABCC as well as the current board policy uh, doesn't uh, call for, uh, doesn't speak to a BYOB for anything other than a, uh, those two instances that we discussed. So, so really it's fundamentally a, a question of um, whether or not the board should be essentially um, telling a private entity what to do when it comes to serving li or having people bring liquor to, um, you know, an establishment, um, for instance, a Super Bowl party. Right. So, I mean, the board, <laughs> to answer yeah, Tom's question, yeah, the board yeah. could say you have to have a tip certified, hmm. sir, you know, a tip certified person there to monitor the drinking. Right. Um, that could be one thing in a could policy be. that we could adopt. Uh, if it's over a certain number of people, we could ask yeah. the chief of police to take a look at it. And, you know, is there going to be a crowd? You know, should there be a detail officer there? Um, but, you know, those, those might be some policy decisions that you'd put in a policy. I, I just think very yeah, small. No, I, 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 <laughs> well, no, and, and, and right, and, and whether or not, uh, you know, you put that in a policy, but uh, to what extent is it a policy enforceable? Correct. Mm. That so, becomes I mean, question. my fear is it becomes, if you have a, uh, for example, at the risk of letting you know that I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce in Webster. So if the Chamber of Commerce has an event at Mafre and you're not you're serving alcohol or you have alcohol there, but it's not from a restaurant, hence do you have to pull a liquor license? And I just I just think it's, I think we're overstepping at that point. For the for the record, my friend, we would probably not allow Right, no, I think so. <laughs> not as premises, I think there's a rule against that. <laughs> I've, I've done a little work on online and I've, I've seen it addressed uh, one of three ways. Either they don't uh, issue BYOBs or they um, don't tackle the problem or subject. Or the third I've seen is they create a BYOB um, uh, inclusion for anybody that sells a ticket or pays for an event, any paying. So this wouldn't be like a resident at your home, your Super Bowl party, mm -hmm. unless you charge lottery tickets or sold a ticket for admission and then it falls under their BYOB policy, which can go anywhere from just having sufficient proof of insurance, uh, limiting the amount of alcohol any one person can take in, that sort of stuff. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, how you want to, number one, uh, provide for the safety of all, all people in town. I mean, it makes little sense if you have a BYOB I mean, BYOB is, serves a purpose no matter if it's a not profit or, or uh, a business or, you know, I mean, that's yeah, I think the way we, I look at it. And I think we have a BYOB policy for those situations we talked about, um, you know, where but someone food. has yeah. food being served or in particular, they don't have a license. They don't have an alcohol license, whether mm -hmm. beer and wine or a full or cordials, um, in which case we would, we would actually issue a BYOB license. I, I personally think this would be overreach for me um, to get involved in that, and I don't think the, you know, the businesses need the government through us, um, police department or town administrator to kind of oversee this, and you know we might then require them to, you know, have tips certified or have a police detail or what have you. Um, the onus is really on the is really on the business to make sure that people behave appropriately. Um, and from the town's limiting, uh, the town's liability limit, um, I, I think we're better off not adopting a policy, you know, for these types of events because we, we do have uh, liability limits right now that we're protected on. I think if we try and gather authority yeah. over these, we run the risk of increasing the town's liability. And I do think there's a question of enforceability. If you're not necessarily in, uh, <clears throat> acting in accordance with uh, state law, uh, you know, how enforceable is a sanction that you may take against a property owner? I, I don't know that there's a, um, if you know, you, you set up a, a system, you call it fines or whatever the case is, well, how are you going to get someone to pay a fine uh, that's not, when the board isn't authorized by state law to do that? Yeah, the board so, would be authorized by state law. It's difficult. If a liquor, if a, it's difficult, a yeah. restaurant who had a liquor license overserves someone. Right, and and to also distinguish between somebody seeks a one 
um, a one-day liquor license for an event of some sort. Um, you know, in those cases, you know, um, an establishment would usually bring in a bar service for a day or however many times a, a month or year you, know, you want to have an event, uh, and that that that's your issue. Your liability is dealt with through that process rather than a BYOB type policy. So. I mean, kudos to you for coming forward about this it. Is, rather uh, than yeah. being yeah. do it right. You know, behind the back. Yeah. So if, uh, I mean, you've yeah. made us, made, especially for rules. small business, you want to encourage yeah. small businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly made us think about some things we've never, it's never come to our <laughs> attention before. You made us work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, we and, and we learned about it, too. So um, am I, I don't know that we need a vote, but um, we probably should take a vote um, as to whether or not we need to adopt. I'd make a motion that we do not adopt. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to not adopt a BYOB policy for these types of situations. Any further discussion? And when we say these types, those that fall outside of the guidelines. BYOB right. policy. Yes. Yeah. And we'll we'll make sure it's clarified in the uh, in the minutes. Okay. Yes. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, one opposed, four ayes, one opposed. Mr. Gabor is opposed. Um, with that said, good luck with your paint and sip. Oh, thank you very much. I right. appreciate it. Right. And Hopefully thanks, for, and thanks for coming yeah. forward with it. <laughs> of course. Appreciate thank that. Thank you so much. So we're gonna to have to get we're gonna to have to get Don invited to your paint and sip just so that we can see what kind of artist he really is. Especially when he sips. He sips different than wine, though I think. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, next is a public hearing request to approve Class Two used car liquor license application filed by Iron Wolf Motors, located 37 Market Street in Webster. Uh, this is on page 48 of our package. And do we have anyone here who'd like to come forward? If you wouldn't mind. Again, sorry to keep you waiting. It's tough to be on the far end of the agenda. Uh, good evening, everybody. Okay. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourselves. Sure. Uh, my name is Kim Livingston. My husband and I are the homeowners at 15 Mill Street in Webster. We've been there 20 years, raised our family there. Um, so we were a little bit surprised that there was. Um, this application to have a retail business right next to our home. Um, so to just give you an idea of how close um, 37 Market Street is to our living room window, we can look out there. It's probably about eight feet from our living room window um, to the back of 37 Market. Um, and then our yard actually runs parallel to the back yard of 37 Market as well. Is it, um, is it possible, Rick, to bring up Google Earth just to get an idea? And I just want to make sure, did we in fact open up the public hearing? I don't think we did, so. So why don't, why don't I do this? Could I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Motion to open the second. public second. hearing. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of opening the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Public hearing is now open. <laughs> okay. um, so, um, so we obviously had concerns about, um, you know, if there would be security, um, if there would be people who are, I don't know, looking for a car, wandering into our yard, um, if there's security lights that'd be shining in our bedroom, um, just a lot of concerns going through our heads. But our, our, our home, our home where we brought up our children is very, very close to the proposed business. I'm going to try and see if we can bring it up. Um, do you have Google Earth on there? That would be one question. If not, um, Webster GIS. Just so we can all get an idea of what. Um, we're testing uh, Rick's yeah, this is, uh, skill, digital. Uh, skills here. This is uh, a real challenge for me, I have to admit. Did you say you live adjacent or across the street or? Um, so I guess it would be adjacent. So one side of our home runs parallel, the yard runs 30, parallel to the back and sorry, as I came well. 37 Market Street, Webster. I'm more so the more left side of your property is adjacent to? Um, I guess it would be the right side. 
Yeah, so uh, if you're Rick, facing the front of our home, it would be to the left. Facing the road, it would be to, yeah, if you're facing the front of our home, it, the building would be to the left. Okay. Yeah. It's 37. In reference to your home, where would the parking be? So we, um, we park in the back of our home. It's kind of a interesting setup, but we, we do have, um, parking in the back of our home um, and there is an apartment building in front of our home where uh, I don't know the number I think it's like 13 mil there's several apartments it's a green apartment house they actually park in front of our home so we really don't use the front of our home at all okay what about the business though what? where's the parking they show parking for the business where is that in reference to your home Oh, sure. Come on up. You can. Sorry, you can't see through that. In front of the building of 37 Market Street, and as I understood, you are living on the back, right on the back, right? She is. We're, we're from uh, so further on, on Market Street. Market Street. Market Street. Yes. 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 There's a few concerns we have, but we wanted to hear what he's what looking to do first before we. Well, that's uh, correct. Our home would be. Are you reading this right? This is the front. Our home would be right here. Our yeah, that's yard. Right our yard right here, that's and correct. So, uh, yes. Actually, you're using that um, parking area right there. Rick, it should look like this. Yeah. Right behind the building. I'm going to move the screen here. <laughs> we don't no. use that parking. No, our parking's back here. Oh, your, your parking is And that's where our back. yard is. That's yeah, right. just, yeah. just key it, yeah. just key it in yeah. again. I don't need it. Just kind of disappeared on you. It's over by Slater Street. Yeah, there's North Village. Sorry, it jumped on a Google Earth on me. see it online here. Well, I have it there too. So, just so we're clear, Kim, Kim, you're in a butter, and and I'm a business uh, president. Okay. So you're pre you're you're presenting. Yes. Okay. Uh, you you have the application. Yes. Okay. Um, is there anyone else that wants to talk? Did you get your answer, Kim? Your answer question as far uh, your your question answered as far as where. The location is? Is businesses in relation to your? Yes, because that used to be the old yep. market. I'm sorry, would you mind coming up and just, just state your name if yeah. you don't mind, please? My name is Evelyn. Evelyn? Christensen. Christensen, thank you. And we own a property as well on Market Street, and we're neighbors. So I have an idea where she is, because right now where they build in it is the old mother's market. That's correct. It used to be the old, old uh, Upper Pearl Street. Yep. <laughs> so they're actually opening. I seen if he's using the lot that is next to it, it's it's open. They're starting to open all that area. So, so that's right by the railroad. That's correct. Right. And yeah, I believe good. Good. she's right on Mill Street. Good. That's correct. And she's right behind there. Because mm -hmm. we used to go across that way. Yep. Yep. At one point, walking from there. There used to be a little walking path right. and then right. it started to get Everything started growing oh, up, right. and now that the building is completely out and sold, they're trying. We just heard that they're trying to build this used car lot, but as we know, is that street's becoming very uh, traffic-wise, and we have the other end is blocked by another commercial business. 
So we have a lot of hard time going towards railroad road there. And then we live on Market, which is just to be the old upper, lower, um, upper. <laughs> so on, on here, can you identify for us? Um, is it Alan? We're, we're the, sorry, you know, you can look it on, if you can just point on here. Yeah, right up, yeah. there's a screen right up there. Use your arrow if you could, Rick. So, yeah. Are you right yeah, there. Right there. Yeah. That's it right there. Okay. Yeah. So the agreement. You can come this way, that's okay. Yeah. It's easier to no. see. The agreement, when I sign up with landlord, mm -hmm. it says uh, that I can use uh, the building and uh, parking space in front of the, of the building only. So we uh, tell, is telling us that that area, which also landlords area, now is clean up. They remove the trees. They do have plants, but I and my business, we're not gonna be on that area. We're not gonna be in parking. So I'm uh, applying for my. Spaces like my eight and uh, nine and eighteen. So it will be displayed five vehicles outside, one for handicap, one for employee, one for uh, customer parking. That's it. Uh, my uh, business is uh, most things. So, so you're looking to act, do most of your sales across the ocean? Yes. Yeah, so uh, do you export them the outside of? Right the now, US. I'm working like that. Sorry, I'm working only to sell cars from outside the U.S. But um, today, I'm focused on. Sure. Sorry. We'll have you sit down. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> so, as I said, the part of the business is to sell cars. Um, online for the export. So at that point, cars will not gonna even be delivered or drive it to storage on that actual parking lot. But also, yes, I want to open retail store at that position and have an office. And the uh, parking in front of the building is one uh, 100 feet wide, which technically fits around 10 cars. Mm -hmm. The parking, standard parking space is nine feet by 18. So i applying for five car dealer license, which could be outside display area five vehicles, one handicap, one customer parking, and one employee. So it actually will be eight parking spaces, and that's what I'm, I'm showing you here. Okay. So here is the entrance in the building. It's front of the building. 
the lady uh, also complaining about what lights could be on the back of the building. So that building has very small uh, windows in that area, and I guess there is only three windows. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what exactly size, but I guess it's three feet by two feet, something like that. And most are uh, from the uh, right side of the building, same small windows. And actually because uh, there is like small hill, so those windows are almost uh, like two feet from the ground, from actual parking space, what, what, uh, what actually is from the right side of the building, but it will be not my parking spaces. My area is only in front of the building. And um, another lady is telling that uh, from left side of uh, that building, which uh, I guess if, if I see right, uh, the owner of that property is cleaning that area, preparing probably for some more businesses, but my, uh, my agreement is only allows to storage cars in a designed parking area in front of the building only. So I don't have any plans to put as more asphalt in that area where now it's cleaning because I will not gonna use that. It's, it's not my point. Um, did, sir, did you wanna make a, a comment? I have a few questions, sure. Okay, sure, would you mind coming up and uh, Kim can share the microphone with you if you don't mind? No, sorry, <laughs> I, I did have questions about this. Yeah, that's great, great, thank you. Uh, my name is Alan Dabrowski, I live a little further down on Market Street than I've ever like my whole life. And, uh, we just wanted to know basically what you were looking to do there because that lot has been empty forever. And now the landlord, he's saying the landlord's clearing it. We just have concerns about that becoming like a full blown car lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely understand. Are you storing any cars there? <clears throat> no, today no. And uh, what I just no, thought. Are you, are you going to? No. Are you going to be doing any repairs there? No. Okay, no so repair. it's just the sales office. Just the sales office. Okay, you, you don't have any idea what the landlord is cleaning the lot next to it for? No, I have no idea, but landlord is really uh, good as a person. As we spoke a lot of time about uh, hold that property, so he just take care of that property. He, he put just, um, he told me last year, new roof for the building. Well, been doing a lot on the building. Yeah. yeah. So he put the new windows, actually he, he takes care of the building and that's what he asking from me too. So we spoke that there will be no repair shop. So I totally agree, I really don't want to have a repair shop because repair shop, most of all, for what reason need? Oil changes, brakes, a lot of uh, wear uh, materials, hazard materials. So I'm focused on modern vehicles which are clean, they are quiet. So, uh, as example, Teslas, they awesome cars, and I really want to share my experience what I have with those vehicles. And um, hopefully there will be a day when you guys came in and I will show you and introduce uh, everything that I'm doing for. We're always looking for good neighbors. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Same and, to and me, I really wish to be and if friendly I, to And if I could, if, if um, of course, we're in the public hearing part now, so we're just trying to yeah. understand from neighbors and the business, um, you know, if, if when we close out the public hearing as part of the discussion, and as if the, dis, the selectmen decide to issue a license, we would actually restrict that where way. the parking would be. So I'm not sure on the left-hand side what's being done. You said all those... Trees, trees have been, been cleared. cleared. It hasn't been touched in 50 years. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm looking at the zoning. You know, it does. It looks like it's industrial yes, zone. Yes, it is. And it yeah. borders. You know, it looks like it's kind of split, bordering. You know, some yes, of the so this is in other industrial industrial industrial. Industrial than commercial, right. Right, so. right. Is that the mother, the old mother's market? Mother's market. Yeah. So nothing's been in there since mother's closed oh, yeah, down. It's, it's been. It, it has screen printing. Atlas screening has been there for years. Okay. I think the guy. Some. I don't know. Closed it up recently. Uh, so it had been active. It was a one-man operation. He it was very quiet. He never bothered anything. We, we, 
Our concerns are it's a U-shaped street. When you get to the corners where that business is, you can see you come down from one lane and then over. Can, can you point out well, on yeah, this map right here, please? Yeah. And if you can expand that, Rick, if, okay. if you could this, just a little bit. This is North Main. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. This is North Main. Yep. You come down the hill. This is uh, Market Street, and then it goes down to Railroad Elf. Um, these corners on both ends are one car line. Right. And we have problems now with cars zooming around there, and you almost get hit. Especially the other end. The other end is a new business in Anglo's own warehouse. We were told that they weren't going to be using that. There's a, if you zoom out to the other end of that street, if you could. Yep, there we go. Keep right. going. More. So down over here. Keep going. There you go. This warehouse right here has a corner of loading dock. Okay. And they're using. And they're bringing, we, they were told, we were told that they weren't going to be bringing any semis in. Well, now they are. So we turned the corner to come down. This has nothing to do with you. Hello, I just seem to stay. Okay. Um, if you turn the railroad out, yep. you, come, you turn the corner to come home, because I live here, and she lives over here, you're blocking the street. So you have to go around them in their parking lot, jump the curb to come back, or turn around somewhere and go back. So we've already got a problem on that end. We also, the street is 1800s. We were told there was a lot of traffic towards the end of Anglo's life with semis, and the town actually told them, do not bring semis down there, the road can't handle it. Now we're starting to see semis in there. Uh, we were just concerned that something's going to go on the other end, we're not even going to get home. His business sounds like it shouldn't be a problem, but in our eyes, we're seeing a lot being cleared, used car. This concern. So, if you did approve something, he's asking for just an office, basically. Uh, in in ten, 10 designated spots. Yeah, in front right, in front of the, right in front of the building, there's, there's parking places. Right. That's that's not a big deal. But if he's going to start, you know, doing a repair shop or uh, down, down in here on the other side of the, of the railroad tracks in this, the, the old Anglo's buildings, there's a speed shop. Two o'clock in the morning, they're rubbing the engines, they're racing in the parking lot. Happens all the time. Uh, we've called the police a few times about cars from this business parking right on the corners, and they said, oh, they're not supposed to do that. And they talked to them, they do it again. So it was very hazardous on both ends. It's a very little street. Yeah, it's almost um, something where Kenny from the highway department should get involved in maybe marking the street better. Um, yeah, no parking yeah. signs, etc. Well, they're saying it's what 15 feet or something. Well, 15 feet from the corner isn't really that far. When you, it's only a car and a half wide. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we heard about a car, used car dealership, can imagine we had concerns. Yeah. Of course. And, and, and just for uh, people's knowledge, uh, any type of repair shop is a different license. Different license. Right, right. He that's couldn't. Right. He couldn't do that with a class two. He would need a whole different license. Oh, please go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Can you magnify it? Maybe a little bigger. Oh, sir. oh bigger. <laughs> there we go. Then you got to move it down because you went too far. Oh, jeez. Other end of the street. All right, this is this is where it gets complicated head, for me. Head <laughs> head head Drag it down a little Drag bit. Drag it down. Almost there. Oh boy. I'm a little more. <laughs> That's good. There you go. Here okay. it is. Yeah. When you You're back nice. on this side. Yeah. Well, you know, I have one in the bag. I should well, probably didn't, didn't anticipate this. She's right. Nope. Oh, this, oh, there you go. Right there. This yep. is her house right this here. This is our house. This Literally, is our yard. So little dinky house tucked behind the business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so again, our bedroom and living room is extremely close to the back of 37 Market. So I understand you saying that your cars are going to be in the front. But our concern was, are you going to have any security lights in the back of the building um, that would be near our bedroom and living room? Living room? And also our backyard, which is what you were saying. Um, so right next to our yard, right next to our yard is where it's being cleaned out, which it sounds like your cars are not going to even be there. So maybe it's a, a question for the landlord, but we had yeah. concerns that a car lot is going right next to our yard as well. Yeah, the right one was a huge car dealership going in. Right. Yeah. Wait a minute. Is the, is the uh, 
the land in between your house and the building also being cleared? You see the trees in between the two? Right Has that also been a small been? tree line between our yard and... Okay, that's, I was wondering if there's a buffer. There, there is a buffer. It's, it's trees and some brush. All of this, as far as I know, all of this link to the rail tracks belongs to this building. Yeah, yeah. Clearing all of that. yeah I, I could see it on I could see it on the uh, it stops like right around here where this guy's yard and then it comes across like this I mean all of, so all of this is owned Being by cleared. that building. I can see so it. it's, it's I can a good see size it lot here. yes yeah. it's all the way to the big work. now do you, do you have bays inside there are you going to bring, bring cars inside the building so I was uh, we spoke with landlord, we will re replace the front entrance door to the glass and uh, we will make a showroom for a nice clean -it vehicle inside. For a car? Yeah, for, for a showroom. You better have that, that, that building is the original, like eight, early 1800s. Sing it's sure single story, correct? <laughs> single story, if I remember right. Hold on, it's a basement. Uh, yes, it's a single, single story single with a basement. Story, but there's a basement and it's been a long time since I've been to Mother's Market. That building has been there a long time. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, yep. If, would you mind just, we have to see, in a public hearing, we just have to everybody state their names so we can yeah. put it on the record. And if you need to come, we can share it. Sure, if you don't mind, that'd be great. <laughs> We're going to have a party. We may have to bring our own BYOB license tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you can come on this side. Um, I'm Jean DeBrusky. Then he would, if that were the case, it'd be in violation, be in violation of his mm -hmm. license in the so, town. Would. But he's gonna, they're going to park on our street. Our street is narrow, not coming in with snow. The snow makes it that much worse. And if we all remember, Anglo Fabrics had that super bad, terrible, horrific fire. We had more fire trucks trying to get down there. They could not navigate down the street, and this is the truth, That's because people, you wouldn't believe the amount of people wrote down because oh. they used to work at Anglo mm -hmm. to look <laughs> and the fire trucks from all other towns could not get through and that is the truth we lived there we were there and my feeling is this the other end of the street is blocked by those trailer trucks which has been that way for years they back in and they leave two-thirds of their truck out in the road so say they're there Say we have an emergency and there's a lot of cars parked, because if they're not going to park in their front lots, they're going to park on the street. What happens? And we didn't, nobody saw the Anglo Fabrics fire coming, and it was horrific. Do they park on Market Street as you come this way and then, and then head they, they south? Do they park on both sides? The other, or are they allowed to park on both on sides? The other end. That you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's always cars parked right in the corner. So it's only about a car and a half wide. So we're, we're Market Street and Railroad Ave. Yeah. Right. Is parking allowed on Market Street? Yes. Okay. Street parking is yes. most of us only have street parking. They're homes, yeah. right? I yeah. have one of the few driveways that's level with the road, and even so, every car turns in my driveway. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I, when I do this road, well, they can't get through yeah. because it's blocked. 
You should have a two dollar toll when you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a very small community. It's a very small street, and we were just concerned about a, a car dealership going in. Um, now he's saying that we might have a showroom. You know, that's first he said there wasn't going to be any cars kept there. Now you're saying that maybe you'll have something. Is is that where the work would be done? Where you're taking and installing batteries into a car or, or what have you. If you. Are you going to be doing any work at all? Because this is just a can, can sale. You are you, do more you more plan on doing any work on cars or is it just sales? Because repair shop is a different license. I am completely understand repair okay. shop license is completely different. Okay. I'm not focusing to open any repair shop for public at that address. Okay. Just, just want to make just sure. Sales. Just for clarification though, because I, I, I think I heard you say twice that there's no cars there. I'm hearing there will be cars parked in the front in that parking lot. Okay, just which, which is backing out to a corner. Right? Yes, no, I, I, just, I, I think you had your map and you showed eight spots. We showed yeah, so like, one for staff, one for. Just one. Eight. Okay. Right. And that, that line is uh, If, if they don't, if they don't, if they pull in those first, they would. If they backed in, they'd obviously still be in the street to back in. A security system or lighting um, in the back where our house no. is? Or so no. uh, that, came, that came back to the back of the building. Uh, your house is that one, and this is the inside there is a one uh, large room with the tiny two windows. Yeah. Well, no, our house is actually. Yeah, yeah, right. Here, so this is the. He's looking at the little map. You're the little map. map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is the room, and there is only two small windows. Like one feet till two feet, even smaller than that 
a security light or Put a garage door there. That's what no, it seems. No garage doors. There will be two side doors. Okay. Slides. Okay. Through the front of the building. Yes. Same place. Okay. Which is why, if I could, which is why you don't have the parking spots on the right-hand bottom of that, because that's the access. So, so one of the concerns is to make sure that there wouldn't be a spotlight in the back um, where those trees are, or if you needed to, to black out the windows, if the windows are going to be lit at night, you can easily black out those windows. But at night, just a, a shade, something to black them out. Electric yeah. cars. And it's owned by uh, Market Properties of Worcester, Mass. I'm not sure. So he's also the landlord. Who, who's the, the who's the owner? Same. Uh, a question. You on this picture they gave us. There's 11 parking spaces, I, but there's only eight on that yeah, diagram. So And, and this is a procedural question, uh, perhaps for Rick or Courtney. Um, can you create a license restriction for internal combustion or no internal combustion motors, mm -hmm. just electric, or is it just a sales license? Well, I think you can. 
you can create a, a, a regulation or could st uh, a restriction in any manner you want. That it's for, let's say, Absolutely. electric vehicles only, no internal combustion engine? Yes. Okay. Yes. It just is a, is that a problem for you? Uh, yeah, why not? But uh, another one of the kind of people who owns the gas engine, they will trade in the old vehicle. So that's how we have to buy it back from the customer. And technically, we also have to resell that car or promotion or somewhere else. So it would be far here. But I'm not focused on those internal promotion vehicles. So I will just sell to the auction for sale. All right, so you wouldn't, in your case, you wouldn't want to see a restriction to just electric vehicles then? Of course not. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Dabrowski? We don't have a problem with you know, gas and electric, whatever. We were just having a problem with a full block car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, what, what he sounds like you're going to do sounds like a really nice niche business. <laughs> Yeah, he said it was online earlier on. I don't know if you could hear that or not. So there wouldn't there wouldn't be a lot of cars running through and looking at it. Is what, what I understand. What happens if we have issues like if, if it's not doing what we're what he said? Well, he's he's yeah, so I, I think we have code enforcement, which Rick would be, you know, in charge of. <laughs> like Don, I, we all pointed that way. Right, and I point this way. Yeah. <laughs> and, she, and she points to our building commissioner, That's right. who was, would be our inspection officer for such things, yes. Which so, is, so what's which, good about a public hearing is everyone gets their concerns out, you hear the plan, um, and then... I, I totally agree with... Uh, yeah, and after the public hearing, then we talk about it, we may end up wanting to say, hey, listen, talk a little bit further with Rick and, and Kenny, Kenny, Esposito, Kenny, Kenny Pizzetti, um, our uh, highway superintendent to get an idea of some of the other this is these are more problems than just this the, the street has problems um, you know that probably Kenny can get involved Ken. in there's a yeah. safety commission safety committee that probably should be aware of this and it's, it just sounds like this business isn't going to cause much issue but there's a lot of issues on the street absent even this 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 business He's getting the of it because right, right, right. You know. and um, through the chair to add Ted did send an email so that he had no issues with it. Right. So the building inspector has, has uh, taken a look at it. it. It meets the zoning. It has enough parking. So the building inspector, Ted Tatro, has said he's okay with it. But again, this is why you want to you want to get the public hearing and get the public's involvement. You would never put restrictions on I would say would be don't allow any work. Right. Repair work. Don't right. Repair work. Yeah, we can see. Really yep. <laughs> and, and we probably want to get an idea. Someone, Ted, may want to ask the question, what does the owner, what is the owner's intentions with removing that? So on the... We're more concerned with that than with what we're hearing here. <laughs> yeah, so on the letter of the intent uh, of the owner, there is a phone number uh, he listed for any questions you... Right, and that's, that's something that, you know, Rick, through the building inspector, can, you know, just... Yeah. give a call and, and find out he's really a nice person so I don't think there will be a, any concerns we really open to the public and we will we, we wish to make everybody happy no no and, and we appreciate you know that and I think everyone here appreciates yeah. the openness just Yeah, it's listed here as Matt M A T properties. That's the owner. Yeah, it's, it's you might want to look into. It. I don't. Know, we have no idea what's going on in that building. I think they're the ones that play music all night. <laughs> the old Anglo's oh, yeah. warehouse. Oh, 
They, they actually own the property just across the street from there, across Market Street, which is no, vacant. It's now full of storage units that they're constantly going in and out of. Yeah. 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 I have no idea. We have no idea what they even do. Well, that makes all of us, I think. <laughs> What's the name of the company? MAT -A Properties LLC out of that, that address. Well, that's yeah, that, but that's the name of the business, Matt Properties. And how would we get an answer as to what the landlord plans on doing with the back of the property? Yeah, I think if we can get the name um, mm. of the owner of your property and uh, with a phone name? number. Yeah, Ted Banner. So we can provide that to Courtney or, or yeah. to Kelly. And to answer oh, your question, Kelly Kim. Kelly already do have. Yeah, yeah. She, she we, does. we can then find, we can ask that question. The town can ask that okay. question. Thank you. Um, so from a public hearing standpoint, is there anyone else that has any different concerns or comments? So it's industrial zone. So um, the building inspector is responsible for looking at the permitted uses of each zoning. So the, if it's industrial zoned, um, I have to believe, yeah. based upon the fact that the building inspector said he's giving his thumbs up, to that business, that a, that a used car dealership, Courtney and Rick are shaking their heads, right, yes. is, a, is an allowed use in that particular zoning yeah. Yeah, for industrial. Okay, so um, seeing no other questions on the public hearing, yeah, I'd entertain a motion to close the public so hearing. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further questions on the public hearing? Hearing none, all those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, it's a unanimous vote to close the public hearing. So now we talk about the discussion that we just had. So I'm going to open it up to the board first and see um, if there are questions. Um, there are obviously some questions that have come up that perhaps we should allow Ted, Rick, Kenny to address some of the questions, but I'm going to open it up with that. I'm just going to say, um, I'm referring to the uh, map here. It looks like the, the distance between the building and the roadway on the right-hand side is greater than the distance between the building and the roadway on the left-hand side of the building. No. In front where you're drawing the parking lot? Yeah. You see it's... You see what I mean? On the right-hand front side of the building there? It's angled. It, it looks it's like it's angled, angled. So there's more space between the building and the road on that side than there is between the building and the road on the left side. It looks. Yeah, that looks narrower yeah, than... If you, if your you drawing look, looks perfect. If you, you know? look at the GIS map, it's actually linear. Oh, it is linear. Yeah, it's not, it's not um, uh, kind of... Decreasing just, inward uh, from right to left. Like older asphalt and newer asphalt. Oh, okay. And okay. I'm just referring, it's narrow. They're complaining how narrow that corner is now, so I'm just thinking cars. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you, again, you can see on the GIS map, yeah. it's a straight, yeah. it's a straight yeah. line. So there are a number of questions that, that have been concerns that have come up uh, with the street itself, with the amount of traffic, with parking on the street, with at the far end of it as it uh, meets up with, it looks like it was a railroad ave. Uh, um, so those are things that I think you know, we should ask Rick to have Kenny Pizzetti look at, mm -hmm. maybe the building inspector and possibly the safety committee to make it safer there. Um, with respect to issuing a license here, what are the questions do we think we have that we, we, we may need to ask before contemplating granting a license? Or do we have any? I don't have questions, I just have a couple comments. I think that you, know, you did a really nice job here listening to the neighbors and addressing their concerns um, and being res very respectful of that. Um, but certainly there were concerns about safety about that overall road raised, which I think, um, Can know. we get back to that question about exactly what corner, just to make sure I understand correctly, was 
the concern is about that corner? Yes. No. no. I, I think I heard two corners. I think there's that corner, if we, and then there were concerns at the down. other end as well. Right. So both. On the end of the right. yeah, yeah. I think yeah. there were both corners were raised yeah. as, as safety. So concerns the concern here is it's a very tight, sharp corner, and at the far end, there's other multiple problems. Which is, is not related to what you're not asking yours. for. Right. Every, every, every every road. Right. Every but I think road it, road. it's some fair concerns about a road that's very narrow and being able to have that access to get on there. So um, with regards to what you were saying is I think an evaluation from the safety committee is, is definitely warranted. I don't think we want to perpetuate problems where people can't get to their homes or we put people in a situation where you know, a, a, an unfortunate accident could occur. Or you can't get emergency equipment, exactly. ambulance or fire truck mm -hmm. through there. Um, but but I, I think that you certainly heard the concerns about lighting, access and all of that, and it sounded as if you were uh, looking to come into this to be a really good neighbor. Um, and so I think that was good, but I do think it warrants um, an evaluation to take a look at those concerns that have been raised from my perspective. Right, Ab absent. The, the request, it's, right. exactly. the safety issues, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm fine with uh, what, what you're requesting here. Um, I think you've taken into consideration as much as you can what the neighbor's concerns are. Um, my concern is, and, and it could impact uh, your parking, is the parking on the other road. And again, that, that doesn't have anything to do with, with you, but it could impact your ability to to uh, have your business there and conduct your business. If there's parking, that's uh, a safety concern on the rest of Market Street. But that's something that we've got to address. Yeah, it, it sounds as though the safety committee would look at it and it's possible that, again, you don't want to um, you know, hamper any of the residents, but it seems like maybe you want to have some areas where there shouldn't be parking. Um, or maybe it's parking on one side. I'm just saying that. I've yeah, only so been down that street a few times. But that's something the safety committee can look at. Yes. Yes. He's pointing to the front of the building. Yes. So, of course, we can uh, mark it up that area that there is no parking. Uh, yeah, I think where we were talking, Earl might have been referring to on the other side of it. You know, you could have parking yeah, so on the other I side of the road. On the right. other side. Yeah, I understand that. For those neighbors. So sorry to hear there are so many, you know, concerns and questions about the road in itself. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm appreciative of, of your responses to the concerns. And, you know, if we decide to move ahead, we can act upon uh, putting in some of those concerns in writing. Uh, you know, one of them was repair shop. This is not, does not allow repair shop, so it wouldn't be licensed to do that. And it would only be a restricted number of, of uh, parking. Um, vehicles available for sale. I think it's eight is what's being? That's what that requested? Requested for? Uh, Ten. So we, we limit the number when we issue the license. <clears throat> just have to go back to my book to see what was Oh, requested. you're talking about five yeah, sales of five, five vehicles. And the rest, it will be? Employee, employee the handicap. Yeah. Handicap. Okay. yeah I, uh, he's only asking for five. For five, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Now, inside the building, besides the showroom, are you going to be, like, polishing cars, washing cars, that, that sort no of No washing, just wiping clean, wipe just clean. Yeah, vacuum, yeah. nothing else. It's a big space. Uh, kind of too big for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, further questions? Um, do we wish to act on this? And if we do act on this, do we want to include in there, you know, perhaps someone contacting the owner of the land just to ask what that question is so that we have a, an idea or subject to answers of the questions, what's going on in there? I think there'll be more questions raised if the owner is looking to yeah, have another if he's car, got, yeah, car right. lot there. Exactly. Well, I'll leave it now to the pleasure of the board. What is, um, we could. We so could you're, mo you're, you're looking for a motion to uh, approve with conditions? this on the condition that we have conversation with the owner of the total property and that, on that would be one of the safety I committee. Would suggest. Um, I don't know that the safety, I think the uh, 
second matter is the safety committee. I don't think okay. that's part of, Out of this? the licensing. Um, I think that is something that we would have to ask Rick to follow through on. Separate and above. Yeah. So, what, so what is in front of us is whether or not to issue a license, to postpone it, or to vote no. We would postpone if we wanted to get more information. <coughs> we could issue it for the five vehicles and then uh, in there uh, have a, have a, uh, uh, a motion within the motion to inquire of the building of the landowner what is going on with that lot. I'll make a motion for the last part. Okay. So that would be to, do we have a second? Yeah, what was the, the, what's the, the motion yeah, what is the motion? The yeah. last part. To approve the license with five, uh, for five vehicle yeah, sales, options, so. along with uh, contacting the owner of the property to get a determination of what's going on there. If it conflicts or creates more issues <laughs> that we wouldn't issue the license, we'd want to, um, we'd want to find out what's going on there first. And we would also need a condition that there'd be no repairs. Yeah, well, that's I, I don't think you need that because that's stipulated in the license. Right. Different type of license. Uh, okay. I, I, I do Sales think license. Yeah, the repair license is completely yeah. different. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. But I do think we need to amend that motion to include the condition because I'd like to have it, if we can factor it in it, that there will be no lights put externally on the back side of the building yeah. um, so that, that we, we you know, sure that up. I think we have a verbal agreement, but I think if we put that into that from a formality standpoint, I think that addresses the concerns that we heard. I amend uh, my motion to approve it. <laughs> so so it, would yeah. be, it would be to approve the license for five vehicles, uh, no, light, no floodlights on the back of the building, and subject to a conversation uh, with the landowner on what's happening. Uh, with that open lot, with the land that's been cleared. Uh, I just want to make more update on the agreement, what I set up with the landlord. Uh, my business will not gonna be related to that rest of right. area. So, mm -hmm. my is on the inside of the building and front of the building. Yep. That's it. And I think we understand, we understand that. Yep. It's just a matter of trying to find out what's going on there. Because you could have another, he could be thinking of, he or she could be thinking of, Having yeah, I will complain. <laughs> a used car lot. Of course. Okay. Um, do you're okay, you Don? You've amended the motion yes. for those three items. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Um, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is a unanimous vote. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Alex, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, um, moving on now, our next item is page 62 of our package, vote to accept the resignation of Mr. Daniel Duto from the Conservation Commission. Mr. Duto has served on the Conservation Commission as a member since 2019. Um, I, I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Duto. It's, it's a, a very involved, very busy uh, commission to be on. I want to thank him for his you know, more than three years that he's spent on there, as well as I believe he's a member of the Water Sewer Commission. Yes. Thank him for that too. He, to my knowledge, he's staying on that hopefully. Yeah. So, any further discussion on accepting Mr. Duto's resignation? Accepted with regret. Okay. We have a motion second. to and a second to accept Mr. Duto's resignation with regret. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is a unanimous vote. Uh, next item, request in possible vote to appoint Richard Perrant as a full member of the Conservation Commission. Mr. Perrant currently serves as an alternate member of the Conservation Commission. He is looking to um, be placed in the now vacant seat. Motion uh, to approve. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those Have we you? had the approval of the uh, chairman? I will ask Rick that. I believe. I think I'm there was sorry. an email um, in here. Yeah. Has uh, Mr. Wigglesworth? Is he okay with 
uh, Mr. Perron. He is, in fact, he was uh, asking how quickly we could get him appointed, okay. so. All right, thank you. Okay, with that discussion, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's a unanimous vote. Next item, consideration and possible vote to appoint Helen Kestner to the Council on Aging. On this one, for the record, I will abstain. Okay. Mr. Bork is abstaining. On page 64 of our package, we have the uh, uh, letter with regards to the chair of the Council on Aging. I'm I'll make a motion. For the, asking yeah. for the appointment. I'll make a motion to approve the appointment of Helen Kestner to the... Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we have one recusal. So Mr. Bork is recused. Uh, next, discuss and possible vote to approve the town administrator goals and objectives. And I see Mr. LaFond has those up on the I'm screen. Yes, for, for the, for the uh, benefit of the viewing public, I am going to continue to show my lack of <laughs> prowess. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, this is uh, in your packet, and there's also a spreadsheet in there. For the, for the, uh, this is a process that go, goes back several months, as you know. Um, I have uh, compiled, initially compiled the, uh, um, the input, and on the spreadsheet that I have forwarded to you, that's essentially the first page. Uh, the third page is what um, we had, uh, I met with Lisa and Tom, and we tried to hone those down. Uh, sometimes they were you know, overlapping, sometimes it was just a matter of language. Um, and we tried to cl uh, classify different uh, items into some broad categories. So uh, what I was, uh, I'm hoping the board had a chance to look at. So Rick, if you um, just touch on the slide number two, uh, uh, come up it, in front of us. That's, uh, yeah, and um, this is supposed to. You can do uh, slideshow, see it up there. Yeah, all right. And once again, there you go. Okay, there we go. Um, so we classified these into broad categories, and I forwarded these to the board. On fortunately, it wasn't until I believe Saturday, um, and I'm just hoping that we didn't in some way mischaracterize or miss any of the uh, um, intent of some of the board's uh, suggestions. So. Um, so just through the, these, these broad categories, uh, finance and capital planning. Um, and again, these, a lot of these, uh, I have to say up front, were very kind of, it was very nice that there was already, uh, that most of these items, categories were overlapping with the board members. We don't have any major outliers. Um, nobody went rogue here, I guess, nice to, <laughs> to say. So, uh, but from a financial standpoint, five-year revenue and expenditure forecasting, this was something that, uh, that I had included. Uh, this is also a requirement of the charter, I might add. So uh, something that uh, we've discussed internally with uh, Tim and Courtney. So putting together a format uh, to do that. It's been a little busy financially lately with our uh, efforts with regard to the financing of the school buildings uh, and other capital projects. So uh, we'll get to it. It's in line for me and Tim to work on uh, in, the, in the coming months. Maintain our annual capital planning process. I think it's kind of been, you know, uh, on and off over the years, particularly uh, during the, uh, all the transition the town's had. Uh, so we, in fact, uh, just as a brief update, uh, Courtney has been, uh, Tim have been spearheading this process right now and we do have our compilation of requests and we're going to start meeting with department heads on December 5th. Um, at least Courtney and Tim will be. Um, I'm, um, obviously my goal is to join them. And this is create capital inventory of town buildings, systems, and major equipment. As you recall, this is something the board thought would be a very good idea, particularly in the conversations related to the conditions and the uh, maintenance of the existing school facility uh, uh, during our conversations uh, regarding advocating for that project. And I have jumped ahead. No, I haven't. Okay. Infrastructure. Um, Obviously, we discussed PFAS, which is probably um, as uh, that in the school building are the number one, tied for number one issues and concerns facing the town now into the future. Uh, so working with uh, on the PFAS issue with our Water and Sewer Commission, 
uh, maintaining our road improvement plan. I know Kenny comes in every year and, and uh, discusses that with the board. Um, and you recall this town meeting, we <clears throat> did try to put aside some of our uh, free cash, very modest to start building a, uh, a fund locally rather than just depending on Chapter 90 funds. Continuing our participation and support for the Bartlett School renovation, I think that's kind of a given, but uh, as um, it's a very long and time-consuming process, and um, I know, God bless you, Lisa, I'm not sure how you got volunteered for that. Um, perhaps your prior service on the school committee uh, uh, made it, made it uh, inevitable. Um, and promoting and maintaining our infrastructure needs versus our staffing priorities. So this is really kind of uh, discussing the, the balancing act between uh, staffing and, and capital, which I know historically, I'm not, you know, throughout the Commonwealth and probably beyond, uh, our capital and maintenance programs always take a, a back seat, particularly during tough financial times. So that will be an ongoing challenge. Rick, could I just add on sure. the road improvement? Uh, I know there's been a lot of talk lately about sidewalks too. Is, is that something that should be inclusive in, in that uh, road and sidewalk improvement yeah. plan? Sure. What specifically, uh, Earl, are you talking about the lack of sidewalks or the well, maintenance the of sidewalks? No, the lack of yeah. maintenance and it's not factored into any capital okay. processes mm -hmm. right now that I'm aware of. Yeah. No, it, 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 I would agree with you. Usually we're just speaking, discussing roads themselves. So um, once again, that's, if that's the board's wish. Um, <coughs> and we can, we can come back to that for discussion if, if you'd like. I don't know how you want to handle this. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of sidewalks. That would... No, but we don't have any mechanism now. Mm. That's, that's my yeah. point. Well, I think maybe that's something that Rick can address with Ken. Ken. Sure. Excuse me. And business development. This is uh, obviously, uh, you know, two pages of business development. Uh, and Lisa had brought up, uh, I know his, uh, sometime in the past there had been some uh, looking into researching of uh, business industrial district. Business improvement. Improvement district. district. And I think for whatever reason, the timing wasn't right out of the condition. So uh, Lisa suggested we, we take a look at that again. Um, reinvig reinvigorating West Main Street area w that was impacted by the tornado. Redevelopment and improve improvements at the former Kmart Plaza. Annual review of the master plan to ensure progress at meeting those recommendations. Enhance our efforts to welcome new business. Work with EDC to establish a formal process for business developers to follow when opening businesses in Webster. Create follow-up process with new businesses to assess needs and receive suggestions and attempt to meet the needs of new businesses in line with resident needs. And some of these we're dealing with, with, with uh, um, in a beginning to with our relationship with Nichols um, and our, our EDC um, is working with that. So infant stages, but we're starting to move there. Customer experience, uh, this is something that I think is, uh, there's only two points there, but I think it's more of a broader um, goal, not just what you see here, but expanding our use of online permitting. That's obviously very helpful for both public and, and our business community. And enhancing our customer experience, uh, which includes a website improvements uh, for citizens and businesses. And the second one is more of a challenge than the first one because it's, uh, as you know, we don't have you know, an individual, um, we don't have a communications director like some of our uh, more affluent brothers and sisters out there. So, and there has been some input already. I know Earl made some, some suggestions uh, just last week to um, how we can maybe pursue getting more input from the public uh, and not just ideas, you know, it's more, uh, you know, and I don't want to steal you. Website specific. Websites that's right. Specific. That's right. Um, if, There's if, a lot know, of uh, bro. There's broken links, inconsistencies, and broken links. And right. So uh, old information that. Right. Is, well, and this may uh, behoove us to talk with Nichols College or another college that uh, yeah, one of them might yeah. have. 
a student project yeah. that could help us out here, mm. be cost effective and you know, mm. help the student get some mm. work. My, my thought was just have, you know, we have that uh, link on, on the home page where if you want to see a road, you know, if there's a pothole. Yeah. Yep. Mm. We found a uh, found an error, you know, that a, a, a mm. resident could write it. Found an error on the uh, right. the voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's website. a there's a lot of was an error. a lot of details and like a suggestion box. Right, and, yeah. and realistically, and electronic, uh, electronic suggestion. Yeah. And somebody yeah. could look at it and see here, you know, this yeah. is yours to yeah. correct or update. Or, because realistically, the public is the the eyes and the ears. So there's no way that a town of this size. Um, and people like to think it's a little town. It's not a little town. It's a good-sized town, and the resources we have... 17,776 uh, people in the yeah, last... Give or take, right. Yeah, so, the last, uh, census. Yeah. <laughs> so trying to keep uh, a handle on everything on our website is really almost uh, impossible to do. So to the extent that we invite people, not to criticize, but to, you know, even, if, no, even if it's a matter of telling us, well, geez, you know, where, where, where's the town meeting warrant? Well, let's, well, I know where it is. <laughs> you know, so, so some, and again, Earl and I had this conversation. Sometimes we're trapped by our own uh, our history. Be, anyone that's been in it knows yeah. that it can be clunky. It is, it is clunky. There's no question. Yeah. And sometimes you have to ask multiple people to find something. And, that's right. That's and right. It, it should be more end user friendly. And sometimes, as I said, you know, we're victims of our, of our own history, where I would think to put something makes perfect sense to me. Um, but that may not be what, you know, the, uh, you know, the you know, average citizen would, would think to look. So, so some of that, uh, so to the extent that we can invite the public to tell us these things, yeah. um, without necessarily criticizing, that, I think and that and would be helpful. this is a criticism on yeah. Greg, because he does fantastic oh, work with the town of IT. It's yeah. really... So, Almost a full-time job for someone to it's a dealing management with. management is what it is. Right, it, it, right. and, and we, again, we don't have a manager, a content manager, and we're probably never going to. So at least yeah. not in our but, ten you know, years. Perhaps we can get a <coughs> go to one of our colleges, and maybe we sure. can have a, a student spend to a couple of years, a junior year and a senior year. Yeah. Working. Mm -hmm. with. And community. This was uh, um, interesting that more than one board member uh, raised this. Um, uh, question opportunity about engaging with uh, specifically our uh, some of our non English speaking citizens uh, of the town um, I've had some conversations uh, you know in this area with with uh, some other town officials uh, uh, this is a particular um, uh, area where I just want to make sure that that I've captured what the board's thoughts are here Thank you. For it's a little, little more nuanced than some of our uh, other. Um, and um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we just go back to the last sure. one? Sure. I, yep. I would say on the second bullet, I, I would almost suggest casting a broader net when we start talking about inclusion and diversity and, and, and maybe not limit it to just those three. three areas that if we can, you know, think about a way of, um, you know, broadening that out so it's not just you know, age in one specific mm. uh, linguistic, you know, community. Um, so I think maybe we can just kind of broaden the words on that so it's... Well, you can eliminate for young, old, and Spanish right. community because you have Spanish community up above it. Right. I, I, yeah. <clears throat> and we can talk about creating an inclusive environment mm -hmm. that promotes diversity. I mean, instead of, yeah. you can just say for all. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great point. Yeah, I wouldn't limit it just to the Spanish. Well, I know I fit in the old compartment. Well, I fit in there, too. So. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Moving on. Uh, organizational uh, issues, number one, uh, um, enhancing our Conservation Commission staffing uh, to promote more efficiency. Um, as you know, with special permitting authorities, it's, it's uh, very difficult if you don't have the, uh, the right professional staff. And we're trying, we're working in that direction, as you know, but it's, uh, it's been a challenge. Uh, continuing to um, uh, move towards uh, transitioning to a, a, a full-time fire department. I'm sorry, a little, um, which sometimes we, uh, you know, 
it's one of those things that's we don't see it's not in front of us every day uh, but it is a a significant effort both financially um, administratively and management wise and uh, um, I'd like to uh, compliment Chief Hickey for his uh, um, his uh, savvy and working in that direction it's uh, it's a lot of, a lot of skill involved in doing that so and as you know we're really on the front end of it still and reviewing our staffing needs with department heads to ensure coverage and succession planning which is something that was raised by uh, uh, by Elaine and, and this is certainly something where Courtney you know under her responsibility can help out quite uh, a bit. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> in fact I was thinking slides 1 through 10 would be something Courtney would uh, but, uh, I was gonna say there's a lot just <laughs> in 1 through 8 I don't know, yeah. I don't know how you do a uh, your own uh, analysis at the end of the year to say, okay, here's my write-up on my assessment of all these items. Uh, yeah, uh, my concern <laughs> is, uh, well, do we is. have too much in here? Uh, well, can, uh, well we, I, may I not, we may not if we say it's for a two or three year. Yeah, it's not like we're well, that's right. To do this by, Most of these are going to be ongoing. Yeah. Some of these will be, you know, um, again in perpetuity. Um, but nice to know what's important to the board, uh, one way or the other. So Webster Lake, there was obviously a lot of input on, on this. Um, pursue funding for additional lake patrols. I think we've heard that from a lot of the residents, um, which again, that's, that's not necessarily easy. Uh, solidify with the state allowed uses of lakeside ramp. Um, uh, monitor the use of swimming buoys. And PWCs, I confess, Mr. Chairman, I don't know what that Personal is. Oh, th thank you. Otherwise Shame no on me. Otherwise known okay, as jet skis. Uh, this, is, this is a city boy <clears throat> speaking right now. Okay. Uh, considering possible establishment of a lake commission, and I think uh, another, uh, an example was cited uh, in the submission. I don't know if it was by you, Randy, or another member of the board. Work with the uh, Webster Lake Association and the state to preserve, pre preserve and maintain the town's number one resource. Um, create and enforce environmental and safety rules. Um, On the second to last one, Rick, you know, my suggestion is if we could just um, put a comma there, including um, uh, grant requests. Because I, I think the Webster Lake Association in particular has is, is spent mm. a lot of their money treating the lake, we treat yeah. it, and you know, they've, they've asked uh, the selectman asked the town administrator oh. um, for help in seeking grants from the state oh. because we're it's a state asset as well as a town asset yet it's the town who's spending all the money sure. keeping the weeds I, out and mm. under control okay uh, Randy could you sorry to restate what your uh, what, what so what I would just, I would just have to resource just put comma including you know grants okay including state grants and, uh, seeking state right. grants and Kelly you're getting all this I assume okay all right. And finally, human resources, uh, establishing a, a comprehensive human resources system, um, transitioning to the ATA position um, as a personal coordinator, and working with the PAB to promote an enhancement, promote enhancements to our HR system. Um, are there other are there discussion items in, in um, beyond this uh, have I summarized people's thoughts adequately yeah to me on the HR side when I go back to the notes um, with Elaine um, you know I'm going to assume in here we're, we're including um, having the managers complete the job descriptions um, you know because that's still a work in progress yes. um, putting an evaluation system in place so I would just make sure that we incorporate the recommendations um, coming mm -hmm. from the PAB. And those, that is the extent, um, uh, should take us about a week, Courtney, to pull, pull this off. Uh, uh, so I had said on the side to Rick when we hired him, I said, you know, this is, this is the job until you retire. And it may just take <laughs> you that long to get all of these accomplished. Uh, well, like I said, no outliers. You know, and it's it's nice to see that the board is in uh, uniformly uh, appreciate what's important to the town. So it makes our lives a lot easier. Absolutely. Um, I would suggest if anyone has any additional 
questions or concerns to you know send them over to Rick on the goals. I want to thank Lisa and Tom for taking the time yes, to work you. with yeah. Rick on these. Yeah. It's, it's I, I could easy. use a couple hours of tutorial from Lisa <laughs> on how to format these things. <laughs> You did good. <laughs> she was very impressive. Well, this is nothing. It's the, it's the spreadsheet. spreadsheet yeah. like, I actually printed it, and I, I yeah, but, you, but, but it's it, but it's the I meant to print it on a bigger sheet of paper. Yeah, but it's the uh, the manipulation of it. it's like wow, this is. In fact, not to digress, but one of the uh, thoughts I had too in terms of you know human resources and training is well, wouldn't it be good if we we had somebody in here to do some you know, some some training on you know, that would be be wonderful. I mean, yes. I, I've been doing this you know, for how many years? Again, I, I would, I would, you know, point to Nichols sure. or any of the colleges because yeah. I'm yeah. sure that they have mm -hmm. people there mm -hmm. that could, you know, spend yeah. a, an hour yeah. or two just I mean, giving I mean, a, a course tutorial well, to anyone here that would need it. I mean, some things that are so easy to some are foreign to others, and uh, great, great tools if we can actually know how to use them. So they still publish Excel for dummies. Or? Um, actually, I think uh, Excel. Oh, Google. Yeah, that's right. Oh. All right, well, thank you, Rick. And, and again, yeah. thank you, Tom and Lisa. Anything I else? I think it was Lotus. I think Lotus for Dummies. Lotus. I just oh, want to make got, sure got the, on the uh, shelf. Cable Advisory Committee. Okay. Tom had a question about Cable Advisory Committee. Yes. I was just I was wondering. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I, did I, I, I skip it. over that, Tom? I thought. Seeing where we would slide it in. Yeah, I, I must have. I'm, I'm sure it can be. I missed that then. If uh... it's on the spreadsheet, you're, you're okay, thank it's you. It's on the spreadsheet. Okay. Does it indicate where it was going to be slotted? Uh, it was uh, infrastructure. Oh, okay. I would call it. You know what? You know what that is? <clears throat> I, I neglected to uh, include was the last side that said other. And one was the uh, cable advisor. Yeah, and the other one is nuisance properties. Yes, nuisance properties. So. Uh, but that's definitely infrastructure. Infrastructure, and, uh, and I think cable is, in, is infrastructure. Yeah. So if we can sure. maybe add some bullets in there for those. So it might take him a year after he retires. Now to <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. So, uh, okay. Okay, no. it's getting uh, um, getting late. Out. Let's, um, Rick, you have an abbreviated town administrator report? Absolutely. Um, I'll make this quick. Uh, number one, Elaine saved you about 20 minutes tonight with my update. Um, <laughs> we Our wage and cl classification uh, project is almost complete, uh, and I say you know, very close, 95% uh, complete. Um, we do have our HR reviews uh, for our non-union people in place. Uh, we've been uh, doing this year, which, again, with, with great success, and I think if you asked uh, department heads, Without getting into details, I think they'd, they'd be very pleased. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, begin the process with our uh, union employees once we uh, get those uh, um, position descriptions finalized. So. And speaking about cable, tomorrow the uh, Cable Advisory Committee is meeting again and meeting with our uh, Spectrum, representatives from Spectrum, um, to uh, really for a general discussion at this time. Uh, the, the survey has been designed to be sent out uh, that should will be available online for the public to give their input as to what they what, what they like what they don't like what they'd like to see um, of course do have to remind people that the the uh, ability and the role of uh, during the contracting process has its limits um, but <clears throat> a survey is one of the things that that's recommended during the uh, renewal process so that would likely, uh, the goal is to have that online for participation before December 1 and to close on January 31st. So we'll, hopefully we'll stay on that timeline. Conservation agent, uh, we're now into our third recruitment. Unfortunately, our uh, first two um, did not end as, uh, as successfully as we had hoped. Um, so um, again, I don't really have anything else to say except that we're disappointed, but uh, if you know anybody, and I think going back to some of our prior conversations, these jobs are becoming so uh, so particular, so niche that it's very hard to find people um, who have the qualifications who can really step right in without having to train somebody from the ground up. Um, um, we this past week on November 9th, we met with well uh, virtually a group of us, a uh, financial team, uh, me, Tim, uh, um, Tina. Courtney and Monique 
we met with uh, virtually with our uh, the state MFOB, the uh, uh, oversight board, uh, discussing our application to, p to participate in the qualified bond program. And that's the program that allows us to borrow funds at the uh, the state's rate um, bond rating. The state's bond rating is at the moment a double uh, A. Webster's is an A plus, so we're two two grades lower than the state. The state did approve us for to participate up to fifty seven million dollars, fifty two of which is for basically one half of the school's authorization. The uh, the the rest two million was for our um, for the uh, um, design project for our uh, sewer system and metering program, and the others are kind of ancillary things that we already have on the books. So that's good news. And we also had a conversation, a virtual meeting with Standard & Poor's later in the afternoon, uh, looking to, uh, obviously the goal for us is to increase our, get our own bond rating uh, reevaluated. You know, it's not out of the question that we would have uh, a bond rating equal to the state's. Um, hard to believe that we would exceed that. Uh, but if indeed we're able to get to the, you know, the, uh, the double A level, then it would probably give, make more sense for us not to go through the state program. So those things are in, in the mix, and I'm sure Courtney uh, will tell you that um, hats off to Tim Bell, our finance director, who just did a tremendous job preparing for those conversations <clears throat> and for really carrying the ball um, with, with both the discussion. So, um, so my compliments, when you see him, please uh, you know, give him a pat on the back. He deserves it. And also for getting our books closed out and free mm -hmm. cash. Yeah, he's, yeah. Had a, he's had a busy, busy few weeks here. Yes. Um, so don't expect him to get to your emails anytime soon. Um, he's, he's, uh, our sewer design contract, I mentioned to Earl earlier, we did have our, our uh, comments back from town council today with regard to the uh, a contract document. We haven't had a chance to really review them yet, but hopefully in the next day or two we can get, get those comments back to tie and bond for the purposes um, of solidifying. This is for the, the, the uh, $2 million, roughly $2, $2 million contract for the design um, of the, uh, of the, uh, help me out, Earl. I'm, so I'm, I'm, yeah, fast Thank you, thank you. yes, so. And finally, oh, not finally, uh, Lake Street snow removal. The chairman asked me to follow up today with, with, our, uh, with Ken Pizzetti, and he assured me that uh, the contractor on the site, GEG, um, is we'll be working with him to ensure that the roads uh, from the Lake Street project are in suitable condition for plowing and winter maintenance. Uh, in fact, and you know, not that I'm the least bit surprised, but Kenny already had a meeting set up with GEG on site at the beginning of next week. Um, they are anticipating to be closing down, actually closing down the construction piece at the end of this week for the for the winter. That may be pushed over a week, but uh, but Kenny's got it set up for a, a site walk at various locations uh, beginning of next week. We figured Kenny was right on top of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's good. He's good. <laughs> Um, he's, I think he's uh, underappreciated uh, by, by some, and I've mentioned this before, and I know it's late, um, but uh, public works are the unsung heroes of cities and towns. Capital planning process, I mentioned just briefly, and then I'll, I'll stop after this, that our um, um, December 5th, the week of December 5th, are internal meetings to discuss the submissions by various departments, and as I mentioned, uh, Courtney and Tim are kind of leading that effort. And the budget process will probably be starting in about a little about four or five weeks from now. So I did the best I could with the time you gave me, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Rick. Any questions? We look on any matters that he mentioned. If not, I'd entertain a motion to accept and approve the town administrator's report. So, so moved. moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is a unanimous vote. We have our boards and committee vacancies listed there. I think I heard one comment today that was it Elaine, I think, had said the personal advisory board is full. Okay, so we can remove that one vacancy on there. Uh, future events, we have them listed there with the Christmas parade. I'm not quite sure where that is going to and from, but I'm going to look to Carol and <laughs> at some point, uh, I'm sure you'll let us know where it starts and where it ends. We, uh, we may need a Santa's helper because Doug is probably too far away to 
make his way up here. So. We do need a rich. Yes. <laughs> we need to eat a lot between now and then. Um, I am green with envy, Carol. Thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> holiday concert, December 8th, 6.30 at the uh, Gladys Kelly Library, and then a holiday bazaar, town hall auditorium from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on December 10th. We have December 12th as our next meeting date. Are there any issues with that? I will Zoom. I'll be in Florida. It's so noted. Mr. Bork, hopefully you'll be Zooming from Maine instead of Florida, so we won't feel as jealous. Florida. Oh, Florida. Okay. I told Tom I'd do it for the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? It'd be 9.09. Sorry for the lateness of the evening. I didn't see a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is unanimous.